Ladies, here's one of the biggest red flags when it comes to an online workout program. If it says it's made for women, that's right. 99% of the workouts that say for women online are actually watered down terrible workouts that were previously done for men. For some reason, the fitness industry thinks that women's workouts are super high rep, lots of band burn exercises, exercises that are terrible and uh, inferior to other su superior ones. Workouts for women online are typically terrible. It's a big red flag, pay attention. God, I'm, I'm torn on this one, bro. I have a hard time with this. Uh, because for our, our personal journey of selling digital programs online has been a, uh, an interesting one to say the least. We have been, uh, told by our marketing team for years now, uh, how important it uh, is for us to separate that. And they've even come down to like, I don't care if you guys tailor it not or for it doesn't matter it's that we present it that way it's effective because it is extremely effective yeah. and you got it and they you need you got to stop thinking like everybody thinks like you and that people understand there's a difference 90 percent of people think that it's that way so by you not doing that you're losing a massive amount of people now the integrity in us goes who cares then? We don't yeah. care. It's not just about money for us. But the way that a good marketing guy sells it to you that is makes you go like, fuck, okay, maybe he's right, is because you are so stubborn about not doing that, you've lost out on thousands, maybe tens of thousands of people that you could have at least brought them into your circle and then educated them on how it really right. works. And so because you're so stubborn that you don't want to do so. I have struggled with this since the day that we well, there's did, a difference have between, started selling. We're trying to like change the culture of yeah. everything, and it's such a bigger ship to steer. Way bigger, you know, in terms of like like you said, and I, and we've even gotten in discussions with some of our peers uh, about this because they'll do. They'll, they'll present that argument like, well, I'm reaching more people and I'm like by at least like marketing in that direction. It's like I can at least get their attention, pull them in and then we, you know, give them good, valuable information. And there's an argument to that. But uh, if, if everybody does that, then the message is never going to change. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I, there's a big difference between people taking, have no idea, by the way, but it's no. so hard how much You're right. We, we sacrificed by doing that. This because is a debate with our advertising team or marketing team all the time. Has all, been for all the time. Six years. They hate us. Six years. Listen, uh, there's a there's a big difference between marketing a program to women and it's the same program that you give to men. I still don't like that either. Yeah. But that's still better than what they'll do often where they'll take workouts and then design workouts for women. And right, you right. look at the work. And make and it the, gimmicky. And they're the worst workouts. Yeah, yeah. I used to tell my female clients this. They'd say, well, what do you think about this online program? It's all program? the ineffective exercise. Yeah, I'd be like, look, if it says it's for women, it's the worst workout. But this is what, what Justin's saying is this is why this, that's why it's so, it's so true is that this is what sucks is you're right. There is a difference. There's a difference between marketing to women to get the end, but yet giving them, give them a good program. Give them a good program. But the problem is that it gets convoluted so much with all the people that are giving shitty ones because we're all marketing the same way. Yeah. And so it's like, how do you do that? You now know? the marketing you're damned, to, if you do, you're damned, if you don't Now the marketing to women <clears throat> aspect, the challenge I have with that is it perpetuates the myth that women need to train differently than men. <clears throat> that somehow there's, there are exercises that are effective for men, exercises that are effective for women, that women need to train different rep ranges, that there's that myth right there is one of the, biggest, hardest myths all of us have had to overcome as trainers. Think yeah. about the biggest, most challenging Bro, myth is, we've had to overcome. It is so hard that there is literally somebody listening right now at this moment that is shaking their head, that is going like, well, I actually follow this program that someone gave me to that I do this during my one. cycle and it, and, it, <laughs> and ever since I have it has been the, the yeah. it's, it has been the or yeah. I follow this person's program who yeah. you know puts these exercises in for these reasons for women and it has been so yeah it it's that hard that you could be a mind pump listener for years and I guarantee there is a good amount of people right now, women right now, shaking their head, disagreeing with what you're saying. Yeah, right look, now. there's there yeah. are general things that women tend to seek out when they strength train. They want to work out their butts more, their hamstrings more, shoulders more. Men tend to be more interested in chest and arms and that kind of stuff. I get that. 
the whole cycle training, uh, I, that's a, again, another general thing, but at the end of the day, it's down to the individual. So are there differences between individuals and how they should train? Yes. Yeah. That's what you pay attention to. Not yeah. your gender. Right. That's just marketing. And that's annoying. But yeah, the workouts themselves, if you were to take, first of all, if I were to take a hundred workout programs online, just period, most of them suck. Most of them are terrible, terrible programming. Besides the like, com like the strength, the competitive strength market ones, like powerlifting, Olympic, where, where the program actually has to be good. The fitness ones, they're all almost all terrible. But if you take a subgroup and you say the ones that are just for women that say for women, they're even worse. Yeah. They're terrible. Well, and, there's no compound lifts. Yeah. The, there's nothing under 10 reps, uh, that, you know, God forbid. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and it's just like, do you think that squats, deadlifts, overhead press, you know, barbell rows, those types of things are valuable for women, you know, of course, but you don't see that in a lot of these, these programs, you'll see a lot of booty bands and you'll see a lot of like high rep and, and body weight specific type exercise. You know, what's a, a good example or a great point to this is, and you, and you've brought this up many times on the show is where, where the best programming has always been in the fitness space has been in powerlifting or Olympic lifting yeah, strength yeah. sports strength yeah. sports where there's no where you have to go up and perform and show that you're better than what you were before or better than it's the objective. other guy or the other girl super objective and if you look at all the programming from the best of the best coaches in the world for the last however since the beginning of time that we've been making these programs you'll see that there's n never been an Olympic coach or a, a powerlifting coach that's worth their weight and salt that has ever wrote a program different for a woman yeah. you know, than a man yeah. Yeah. Like literally never it doesn't no. exist. It doesn't exist in a sport where it fucking matters that you get stronger and you get stronger than the other guy or the other girl in a certain period of time. That coach is not writing a program. You different. Scale the intensity. The same thing that he gives yeah. to 135 pound Susie is the same thing he's given to big old Sam. Besides the individual 280. Right. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Like an individual coach is going to work on imbalances and uh, right. prior injuries, and uh, you your body tends to be able to handle more volume than this girl or that guy. But as far as the sex difference, zero. There's no. zero difference in that program. No, and I, look, this is here's why this really annoys me because you're right. We could reach more people by using I don't know for lack of gimmicks, term, shady marketing. Okay, yeah. it's true, but. The pr the reason why we don't do that, because we could reach more people, but why don't we do it? Well, because the biggest problem in our space is bad information. Yeah, It's myths. It's uh, information that's inaccurate. It's narratives that aren't true. So if that's the biggest problem, why would we, being at the moment one of the top health and fitness podcasts in the world, continue to uh, promote these lies, even if we reach people and then we change their mind as they come in, a lot of other people will hear about it and it's just going to, it's going to continue to proliferate. Um, and we need to stop it. Look, the fitness space has done a lot of damage to everybody because of the crappy stuff that they put out, but women have been damaged more than men. That's a fact. At, it, like the, when I train men versus women, the, the, the bullshit that is sold to women is 10 to one. It's yeah, just 10 to one yeah. more diet crap, more pills, more workout, you know, false information. Mm -hmm. You know how long it took us to convince women to lift weights, for God's sake? Well, the, we're finally getting there. It took us decades to do so. Like, like this is this is getting silly now. The yeah. I mean, the the image that we've sold to women has been so far off for so long too. Yeah, I mean, think back. Like that's at least you know, at least for the guys, the the you know, male model physique look, you know, whatever you want to say that that image was, say 20, 30 years ago, has been relatively consistent and somewhat good, right? I'm not, ex not ex talking extreme, about the, but I see. What yeah, you're you know what I'm saying? Like uh, to have build build muscle, be muscular, going up in weight or size is actually could be a healthy, good thing. It's not bad, like. I'm not saying that, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger is something that the average Joe should aspire to be like. What I'm saying is like, that's a far better goal to have because most people never even reach that than to have a goal of looking like the 80s Coke model. Right. I you'll mean, never, that, that's like true. That, like you trying to pursue Arnold your whole life, which you will probably never reach, 
is a is a healthier pers- pursuit than the woman that's been marketed to to look Such like point. Mm-hmm. like the eighties Coke model. Yeah. Like that's a very dangerous, unhealthy direction for you to be going. And even if you can make the argument that yeah, of course, some of these bodybuilders on steroids and all that, but you pursuing that physique or goal is far less. And that's detrimental. extreme. And that's exactly. extreme. I mean, giving extreme. The stuff. mainstream male. Uh, representations of ideal, which are also unattainable and all that stuff, right? For most people. But those, at least, you're right. At the very least, there's a certain level of health. For for women, like for men, you'll never see someone who looks like they're on heroin be our beauty standard. Right. That, and yet, That's that my was point the beauty- I'm trying to make. Yes. You know what I'm saying? It's like, of course, I'm not celebrating the extremes. It's just that the extreme for men has still been a, a way healthier pursuit yeah. than the extreme that we've presented to women for so long. And I just think that, and it really, it's and, gotten better, but it still hasn't gone away. No. And if you yeah. look at the gimmicks uh, in the space, the gimmicks and the fads, who do they hit the most? Mm-hmm. Like, here, like this, is a, this is a dirty secret in the fitness industry, okay? You want to make millions of dollars with a fad, you target women. Yeah. They're the buyers. They're, they're, and that's because they're the consumers. Yep. But also they're used to being marketed to that way. Well, we're here to tell you, don't buy the crap. It's all it's all bullshit. And uh, I used to love telling, like I said, I used to love telling my female clients that, like, if it says it's for women, it's almost always a crappy, shitty routine. Throw it away. Why? What do you mean? Like, because that's, first off, the marketing alone is baloney. Second off, they typically will take an effective workout and then they'll just make it ineffective and say, here you go, ladies. We put the barbells down. And the heavy dumbbells down, or replaced everything with, I don't know, this you know flexible stick, or I don't know what they anything they use where you do eighty five reps, it burns. Therefore, you're not going to get big. You're just going to sculpt. Yeah, it's also because I think that you know women are um, emotional creatures, and that's an emotional buy and sell by doing that. They play like marketing plays into that side, and it's not that the men don't have emotions also, but we operate differently when it makes to to buying decisions and things like that than the average female does. So they, they double and triple down. Well, I mean, along those lines, those emotions. men are not very loyal customers. That's for sure. Yeah. Like you ask a guy yeah. like, no, I mean, there's not, we're just not very loyal for the most part with uh, products and stuff. Like you ask a guy, like ask him about any of the products he uses. And he'll be like, I don't know. Yeah. I use <laughs> the uh, best deal. I I use, yeah. yeah. I'll just <laughs> use this one or that one. Yeah. What's that meme where there's like a, like a, they show like a shower and it's like, this is for hair. This is for body. This is for whatever. And the dude yeah. has like dish soap. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, it's like for hair, body, he balls. scrubs yeah. his balls with, you know, as he puts <laughs> on his hair. Yeah. I was trying to think this whole time you guys are talking of like an example of a heroin guy, you know, <laughs> and I'm like, there's gotta be, you know, it's that's usually in like the rock and the roll. Rock space, and roll. Right? But that's yeah. different. It's not yeah, the physical it's, ideal. It is different. Yeah. Like you don't, you don't look at a Nobody rock and roll guy it, and go like, I'm going to work out to look like yeah, nobody's, you know, Mick Jagger. You know what I'm saying? Like no one is doing that. No, right. No. Like that's a, but that is a good example of people that people tend to admire or aspire yeah. to be like, but not for their physiques. I just yeah. think that, you know, women for the most, and it's, and it's changing for the good. I mean, that's the positive. The, the, the good thing is that we are moving in the right direction with marketing to uh, women, but we've, we still, it's still there. It's still lingering. It's still a challenge that you have to overcome, but it is exciting to say that I, I being in this space, as long as we have, there's definitely a clear difference in a conversation that I have with uh, a female client today versus a female client 20 years ago. Like mm-hmm. the fact that things like muscle mommy trends or was oh, one yeah. of our hottest episodes, just bulking in general for is, women is, is a really positive, exciting thing. Yeah. So different. Like you would never put those two words together you know, when 20 I go, years ago. I haven't gone to yeah. the gym in a while. I've been working out here, but I just back this week, I went back to the gym and it's like the free weight area is 50% women. Yeah. Now, nobody thinks about it now, but I, I mean, I re- it wasn't that long. Well, it was a long time ago, but for me, it wasn't that long ago. <laughs> <laughs> there were no women in the freeway area. Yeah. None yeah. Yeah. ever. Like 20 years ago. Ever. Yeah. If they, if they were, they were in the corner, but it was all just, it was all dudes. So there's definitely been some, some, you know, some big, have we done an episode like that, Doug, where we've done, uh, all Before? the positive, no, like the, like the positive oh. changes of the, that would fit, be like, good. like the five most positive things that the, the space has done, like in the last decade. I don't or think two. we have it's done stuck. a specific effort. That would be a kind of a yeah. fun one Let's for us to that. like, like make a list Let's of what we that. think have been the most yeah. positive change. And then maybe we do one on the opposite yeah. side too, of like the five things that got worse or yeah. something. Yeah. Let's do that. Yeah. Today's program giveaway is MAPS Split. This is a bodybuilder workout program. If you want to win it, do this. Leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop it. Subscribe to this channel and then turn on notifications. If you win, we'll let you know in the comment section. 
We're also running a sale right now. Map Symmetry is half off and the RGB bundle is half off. If you're interested in either one or both, just click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, here comes the show. So I got some more negative stuff for you. Oh, so, <laughs> hey, do you know what they just came out with? Uh, that they're trying to market? What? what? <laughs> Vegan cat food. Yes. Yeah, right. That's dude. hilarious, dude. dude. I swear. Like, I thought that was like a slow death. Wasn't that a hashtag or a movement for a while there where people were doing that and their cats were looking like they're going to die? What, and are, you, what yeah. are people doing, dude? This is a... Listen, this is... They're carnivores. First of all, here's well, the website. It would only be a cat person that would do something like this, too. Here's the page. <laughs> yeah, the page... Dude. The page... Dog people don't do stuff. It's, like a, it's on Twitter or X or whatever, right? It's, a, it's called Plant-Based News. So there's no... No bias. Yeah, I'm sure there's no bias there. Plant-Based uh, News. Can cats really be vegan? A new study... <laughs> I want to see the study... Has added to a growing body of research. Shut your face. Growing bo a body of it. <laughs> yeah, bro. Wow, I didn't know there was a whole uh, body of it. Uh, uh, of research on the safety of plant-based diets wow. for our companion animals. Wow. Yeah, so right. he here's the irony of this. What a crock of shit. Here's the irony of this. It's actually quite clever. The uh, Here's the irony. The irony is in order to save animals that people normally eat and don't give a shit about, we're going to starve your pet that you love so much. We're going to make them malnourished. I also think it's cancer, a really so. it, a clever way to, again, uh, play to people's heartstrings, right? I mean, you're saving the planet. You're now, you now right. found a healthier diet for your, your cat. Like, it's just another angle to hit people on, like, why? Meanwhile, their cat's running outside looking for any kind of rodent to, like, <laughs> yeah, fill their, I know, like, like <laughs> void of protein. <laughs> Someone's got to make, like, a, like a, a, like a little five minute cartoon or reel yeah. of, of that. It's like, like catching the, birds, like, ah, uh, like a parody, help. right? Like do a parody of, of the cat. Like, so you get to be in the, like the cat's perspective, how pissed the cat. Bro, was. take a, take a fruit or vegetable, walk up to your cat, see if he wants to eat it. Hey, what's yeah. up? Want an apple? Hey, these are the people that don't watch is shout out to nature is metal. And this is one of my favorite yeah. or the dark side of nature. Like those are such awesome Instagram pages Dude. to follow, but people need to follow that. You do you know, because so you see how it really goes. Nature down. is not like forgiving. Disney movie. No, it's it, not it, forgiving at all. No, and that's the thing. And it's just like it's it's in our DNA. Like there's just certain things like we need. We need nutrients, and and yes, there's there's cruelty, you know, in, in some of that. But that's just like it's it's part of like. Uh, the animal world we live in. That and then the show alone. Those two things. Yeah, to me that's my favorite. Are one. the two things. You ever that, seen like, the vegans on alone? Yep. <laughs> done. Dude. They are done. They they, they, they switch so Tapped fast. Out. Yeah. I found these berries and this whatever, and like day like, three, they're like, oh, nature is I'm metal, and the alone <laughs> are two of the move. most uh. basic raw examples of like this is how we got here. Yeah, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Like this is how it was. How it's been. Forever, just recently in the last fifty to one hundred years, have we gotten so arrogant yeah. that yeah. we think it should all change? I mean, look, the dude, I love. I just have to put. I love animals, dude. You know, like and I, I bash on this stuff a lot. Yeah. I like that people want to be nice and 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 thoughtful and careful, yes. but yes. but you have to live in reality. That's yeah. all I'm saying. Well, look, okay. Paul Check says this very well. The most important animal is you. Yeah, and you got to care for yourself. Yeah. Now, can you eat a diet that's vegan, and can it be healthy for you? For some people, yes. It does take a lot more planning, and thankfully, we have the technology in the markets that allow you to give you the variety and the supplements that can help meet uh, some of those nutrient deficiencies. But some people, no matter what, I had clients like this. They were such devout vegans for moral reasons. I had one lady I'll never forget. She was devout, right, and it was for moral reasons. But man, all of her symptoms were nutrient deficiency related. And she took supplements. She took vitamins. Her hair was falling out. All this. She saw a functional medicine practitioner. Finally, she agreed to add eggs to her diet. Then she agreed to add fish eggs to her diet. And her health made such a radical turn. And I remember having a conversation with her about this. And she's just like, yeah, I had to, I had to like take care of myself because I can't help anybody else if I'm so sick. She was, right. she was getting depressed and anxious and lots. And for some people, that's the case because you're, it's just not, a, you don't assimilate it as well. Uh, and for some people, it's essential. For most people, it's essential, I'll say. You know, when was the last time you looked at like a chart on the 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 growth in in vegans? Like how, I mean, how many? Oh, like how more? many people identify as vegan? Yeah, yeah. Is that, hmm. have you seen something like that, Doug? Like, can we look at something? I'd love to see something like over the last, like say 20 Is or veganism 30? on the rise? Yeah, Put that up. Because also too, isn't the, um, uh, the, the, the burgers and the meat that's like, um, 
uh, what are, like I, I can't believe it's okay. Beyond, <laughs> I can't believe this isn't me. You know, I don't know. I, I, I can't don't know believe, what the hell it's called. They should call it that. I can't believe it's not me. <laughs> <laughs> it probably is. Like, like I feel like that. That's on the decline. Like, they, they pulled it out of a lot of restaurants. You know that's why? why I'm, that's why I'm curious. Yeah. I want to see. And we've heard more and more people that it was are, such have, a fad. It was like it tastes almost as good, but it's actually worse for you all across the board. Yeah, because yeah. all the oils. Yeah, it's just like it. Word got out. Yeah. What is? What does it say there, Doug? In Q1 of 2022, the global score for veganism popularity dipped below 60, which I don't know what that means it exactly, went down. but it did go down. Peak the peak was in was 2019. Yeah. Okay, that's Gradual a, decline. Give me something else. I don't oh. know if I like that stat, even yeah. though it tells us it, it's no, it trending. No, the report shows decline. In I know, I know. I, okay, so that gives me the general, what I was already, whatever I already thought, right? I already thought it was on the decline, right? But I want to know, I'd like to see a graph. I'd like to see like- Speaking of which- you know, but, but, uh, Three million people identified as vegan in 1990, yes. and now it's what- you know, So like, speaking of which, so people always wonder, well, why are we pushing um, not eating meat or animal products as a way to be healthy when it's not true? It's mm -hmm. not true. A healthy- Omnivore diet is going to be healthier for the vast majority of people Follow the money. than a healthy vegan one. Follow the it's money. because you can patent That's right. Follow plants. The money. Once they did GMO plants and then products like, like Beyond Meat is a patty that is patented. Yeah. A burger patty is not patented. You can't because it's cows. So that's what they can do. They can patent and control the market. This is why they push people in this direction. By the way, you Listen, know- Listen, if you, if, you, <laughs> if you saw what just happened to us in the last three years where they used a pandemic to push a vaccine for all of us to take and shoot into ourselves to think they would not manipulate information and data to convince you to switch to another diet because they can patent that other diet you are a fool. Yeah. You are a fool. Somebody just red pilled his coffee. <laughs> <laughs> I mean that I mean that's not even like conspiracy to me. That's no, like it's, business. No, it's, not. It's, it's just like business 101. Like it's watching the trend. If you're about making money and that's what you want to do, that is a smart strategy. Yeah. So uh, forget the moral side, forget the conspiracy. It's just all about the money. That's yeah. what yeah. happens. Like yeah, yeah. that is a a brilliant strategy. Listen, it's if been you happening make forever. A ton of money. It's been happening forever. The food pyramid was heavily heavily influenced by the food industry. Um, remember the time, remember there was a, I think this was in 2000, I want to say 2009 or 10. They were trying to pass laws saying that vegetables must be present in school lunches. Well, <laughs> they lobbied government to qualify pizza, pizza sauce. Because of oh, tomatoes. Right. In, I, as remember that. I remember that. <laughs> I remember that. Yeah, oh, so that's right. bullshit. Yeah. Here's your so, vegetable. Yeah. You got pizza sauce. And so oh, ketchup. So, Doug, what are you reading right there? Well, it Insane. says between 2004 and 2019, there was a 30-fold increase in vegans in the United wow, States. Wow, 30-fold. But wow. I'm looking through this article, and I don't know really how they're determining that. So okay. yeah, that's there, from, you I don't think the, there's any like- There'd have to be a massive survey. Uh, well, know. that other article that you showed, so that's from 2004 to 2019. That other article said since 2019 to yeah, now, we've been down. in a 60-point 60, 60 point drop. Right. And I think one of the things that they're using is the increase in vegan products being uh, purchased. That's probably what That it doesn't is. necessarily mean that everybody's totally right. plant-based, yeah. That's more of a trend thing. It's more of a trend. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I, I don't think they have any real- stats on by, this. By the way, you know what they just successfully yeah. did? Huh. They grew fruit in a lab. Really? Yeah, like lab-grown fruit now they're working on. What? I know. They're really moving in this direction because they're going to be able to patent everything. Yes. Like why? It's already Well, grows. they say it's for the they say it's for the climate this and that. By the way, did you know lab-grown meat is far worse than the environment? The, I, you know, yeah. here I want to be I want to I also okay, why we're talking about this too cuz I I know we're probably already lost half the people that have already drank the Kool-Aid. I do want to make the point that I'm actually not against this because if this can feed people that sure. that are starving in other countries. Sure. And if you had no, if you're, it's like, I can't, like, and by the way, there's millions of people that are, are on less than like a thousand calories right. a day that if we can produce things by the masses with like zero, like very little minimal effort and money that could save lives. Sure. I don't care that it's not as healthy. Yeah, the like, technology. I think I am. Is I am for that. Yeah. But what I'm not for is yeah. is pushing a bullshit narrative just for that. The, the, these companies to make money and to manipulate other people who have the option to actually make the healthier, well, better they don't, choice. They don't present it right. What they say is this is better for the environment. And it's 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 going to save money and feed more people. But what they need to say, if they're honest, is 
right now, it's way more expensive than the real deal and it's way worse for the environment, but we're just learning. It's a new technology yeah. and we're working on and it. it Eventually we hope to get to that point. potential to save That's millions it. of lives. But they don't do that. If we could feed them. No, they yeah. sell it as like, this is better. It's not. And I could get behind that. Yeah, sure. I could, I could totally so, get behind that. Dude, let me get this straight though. Like, so I heard a stat and I have to get like fact checked on this because it, it was pretty crazy. Like, so how much carbon do you think is in the oh, atmosphere? I heard this. Oh, oh I yeah, yeah. I I just give this. a guess. So, uh, so everyone guess. was guessing. All the professors I saw were guessing saw five five percent, but it's like five or twenty percent. Even like some people would think because you know there's a lot of like urgency around this. Right. Like, oh my god, right. we're putting so much carbon in the air. Right. Point zero four percent. Wow. And before that, like thousands of years before that, was like point zero two percent. Yeah. And anything less than that is the ice age. Yeah. Yeah. That's what we're looking at. Yeah, yeah, I've seen that. Yeah, I saw that. I you know, that. so what? Like, where's the hysteria? I'm just, I'm just throwing well, you know, that the, out there as a question. The greenhouse gases were much higher during the time of dinosaurs, and that's why there was so much. That's why they think there's that, a lot of growth. Were so big. We've also made a massive improvement since the 80s and the 90s. In just, the 80s and the 90s, yeah. we were like when we didn't give a shit, we were just pumping yeah. everything out, and there was no effort at all to make make a better choice. Like we were way worse than what we were just at, just or where we're at now. Oh, well, I don't know. People I'm just trying to stay in a logical frame of mind. Look, That's here's all. here's the thing. If people want to, if they really want to be objective about this, then what they need to realize is this: is that if we impose restrictions on emissions, that the poorest of the poor are dead. Okay, there are people that have just come out of poverty over the last twenty years, and they cannot survive uh, these kind of regulations. So we'll kill lots of people. That we will slam them into poverty. Now, if you're rich and you're doing okay, you're a wealthy country, some people will hurt, middle class and lower will hurt, but you'll be okay. But these other people will die. The second thing is nuclear power right now of the technologies available right now has is the answer, mm -hmm. but it's so embroiled with crazy regulations and fears that it, nobody, nobody wants to touch it. But the yeah. truth is we could have the solution. We could create some of the cleanest, most plentiful energy with these new generation nuclear reactors yeah, you know what that I am people don't want to touch. Worried about those. Like I, I was watching uh, this documentary about plastics and like microplastics and like how it's just so pervasive and it literally is in like everything now yeah. uh, to the point where we were recycling it at one point And then uh, I guess because the pollution was so bad for when China hosted the, the Olympics, like they took on a lot of the world's plastic. And they were the only ones like recycling it and just because they didn't have regulations for burning it and like putting it up yeah. in, the, in the atmosphere. Uh, and so it, it was so bad. They couldn't even, so they stopped um, allowing that, you know, those practices. That, so then that actually like uh, put, put the halt on a lot of countries outlet for uh, being able to recycle plastic. So now they just like get rid of it in the ocean and they just, you know, uh, disperse it like all over the place. And it's, it's a real big problem. So there needs to be innovation for sure in that. Like, and I am worried about like environmental, you know, shit. how much of your, your, your stuff in your recycling bin goes, it gets recycled. <laughs> Most of it does just the aluminum, aluminum. That's it. It's I been think that glass way for, it's been that way for a long time. Too. Yeah. 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 Because so they were shipping it's, it's it out. It's frustrating. Yeah. I know. It's super frustrating. You're like, put it in there. We're recycling. No, it goes in the garbage. Yeah. I know I have a buddy that works at waste man, you know, the waste management places. He's like, bro, it goes in the same <laughs> container. I'm like, oh my God. Yeah. That makes me so mad. Why am I separating it out? Yeah, it's just a lot that you think you, you know, you think all this is getting accounted for. It's yeah. just not. Yeah, I know. Hey, I want to tell you guys, uh, this is kind of cool. So you know how I I I I think Doug first said this and he hit the, he hit the nail on the head. You know the uh chocolate bone broth from Paleo Valley? And yep. how like everybody's like it it's the best tasting protein. Yeah, period. Yeah. End of story. There's no protein powder that tastes better. But Doug nailed the, the, hit the nail on the head. He said it tastes like chocolate donuts. And I'm like, it is chocolate donuts. Yeah. We've been saying on the show. Yeah. They advertise it now as I saw with that. chocolate donuts. A little the chocolate donut I, I in the it. picture. I yeah. Because I, I said once you drink it, you know you're like that's what it tastes like. It literally no, it tastes did. like. I mean, 100. percent That's from you. 100. Yeah. percent I mean, there I know because I obviously handle that side of the house like that. We're by far their their biggest partner, and I'm sure that when we talk about their product, how we talk about their, which by the way, kudos to them for being one of the smarter partners that do that. I think it's so funny when our, some of these partners don't take the time to pay attention and see that thing. It's like, that's how much like the information that we're communicating related to their brands makes a difference that why wouldn't you not 
use that marketing tool like in your benefit by going out and putting money behind it like that. So I'd love to see brands that actually are paying attention to stuff like You've that. You've been taking a lot yeah. of that because you can't have dairy now. Bro, I'm so it's so funny how I was so late to the party on it. And of course now I'm I don't have much of a choice. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah. I'm on I'm on that like crazy. My favorite part about it, aside from it does taste really good. It does taste like you said, it's it's a it's great. And even with just like water. Like yeah. I normally make it with the almond milk when I'm at home. If I'm here, I just mix it with water. Uh both ways tastes phenomenal. My favorite part about it is that I can do like four or five scoops of it. Doesn't bother your gut at, at all. At all. It's so easy to digest. At all. Like so if I need a lot, like if I'm way behind on protein and I need like a you know, a fifty gram protein shake i can literally i don't know how many scoops because i think it's like what it's, six, 16 uh, that's grams like, that's or, like four or five scoops like yeah. 12 grams per scoop yeah. if i'm not mistaken it's over 13 yeah yeah, yeah something <laughs> like that right so i mean i could literally load up the scoops and it does not where in the past i remember when i used to do that with whey if i had anything over like it and i've said this before that i know when i had two products that were like heavy and in, in like whey like that in the day mm -hmm. like it would definitely mess up my gut which obviously we know why now um, but yeah, I'm like hard. I've, I've experimented. I've gone as high as over hundred grams of protein from just the bone broth from paleo Valley. Wow. Oh, yeah. Wow. Which I haven't pushed that high yet. Yeah. Not in one, not in one serving, but like oh, in three in the day. or four. Yeah. Day. But still okay. that's a hundred grams. I mean, I have 200, maybe to 215 grams a day. Mm. So that means on that day I would push my protein up to 300 yeah. just as an experiment. Yeah. No issue, no negative issues on my gut whatsoever. It's the only protein powder I could I could probably go crazy with. You know, I'm I'm glad you brought that up too, though, because I know we did an episode recently where we we were recommending to people that they don't do that, and that doesn't mean that there isn't examples of where one of us has done that or do that. Sure, but I don't think if I were to ask you, Sal, is it better than food? Or, or I yeah. would say, would you score your day today a perfect day of eating no. just because you hit your protein intake? If you were like, well. You know, I was on the go like crazy, stuff like that. I only got two whole meals, and then I had to have a bunch of shakes for the day. You That's wouldn't right. be like, it was a perfect day of eating just because you hit your quote unquote macros. You'd be like, oh, it was pretty good. I stayed in my calorie balance. It's better than not, but it yeah, it's good better food. than not. Yeah. But I'm not, I'm not trying to celebrate celebrate a day like that as like that is ideal. It's like that's in case you're better off doing something like that. And I think that's a, an important point to make. Because we had that episode, and I know there was like pushback from the people. Oh, I love my shakes. I love my bars. Like, okay, that's, and we're not saying none of us have, that do that. It's just that if you're always striving to be better, diet, exercise, and health wise, you should strive to always get it, it through whole foods and only use these things as a supplement in case in case you can't get it. Now, the reality is that tends to happen a lot in people who have very busy lives or struggle. Like we saw a bunch of vegans that were on there that were like, well, I don't, you know, it's uh, as a vegan, I have a hard time getting, okay, that, sure. that makes sense. It's then I'm going to tell you to do that. I'm not going to shame you from having two protein shakes and say, well, don't do it at all. And no, now it's, you it's miss better than missing your, target. yeah, now you miss your protein intake. That's so, right, yeah. but you know, I, I'm at this point right now, I'm back to kind of like, I'm loosely tracking. I'm not hardcore tracking. If I don't do my creatures of habit first thing in the morning, which is a solid 30 to 32 grams of protein to start my day. Um, I'm always behind. I'm almost still behind unless I'm like actively getting well, What are you it. aiming for? 200 yeah. something grams? Yeah, I would like, I'm, I'll even let myself hit 180 and consider it an okay yeah. day because I'm not- But it, ideal what? Two, yeah, 10, two, yeah, three. 200. That's hard. It's if you don't have, do. you don't that's start the day with hit. 30 to 50 grams, it's like you're going to eat 70 grams of protein with each meal. Then. That, I know. That's yeah. why- And that's, that's why, hard. That's what I mean. If I don't hit, and I'm okay with, there's nothing wrong with also, there's another point too to make. There's nothing wrong with having one day of low protein. In fact, we if you go further far enough back, we used to talk a lot about the what we think a lot of benefits behind protein cycling, where you have an extremely low day, one yeah. low day, and then you go back up, right? So there is value in missing a day of protein low, but not consecutively. Yeah. And what I and I'm more like I notice if I get in the behavior of not getting my creatures to have in the morning, I could string mm -hmm three to five days of under 140 grams of protein. And so at that point, I know I'm, I'm, I'm potentially losing muscle because I'm not even giving my body adequate protein to hang on to the, the muscle. Totally. You know? Totally. I got to tell you about some books that I got that I think you'd be interested in Adam for, for max. Oh. I found these on uh where did I, I was on a, I think it was an Instagram post. There's like these parenting Instagram pages that everybody like, uh, where they, you know, and, and I see things on there all the time. Like, oh, that's really cool. I'm going to get that for my kid. There's a book. It's written by, it's a book series written by Chris Ferry. And here's the books. Okay. 
The first one is general relativity for babies. Then they have rocket science for babies. <laughs> then they have Newtonian physics for babies and quantum physics for babies. These are books for kids. Have you opened it and looked at it? Yes. Whoa. You know what I like about them? How do they introduce it? I'm curious. I'm learning shit. Yeah, I was going to say, it's probably yeah. best to learn. Well, I mean, it's actually adults. really it's really good. And yeah. as a parent, I'm reading it. I'm like, oh, String that's- String theory for a child. It's actually really, it's really, really good. Yeah. And my kid is like looking through them and I'm- so, you know, a big mistake I've made in the past is if I really want my kid to do something, yeah. I'll be overexcited and I'll go present it and they'll say no and then I've lost the opportunity. Yeah. So there it is. Look at look at all the look at all the different look at neural networks for kids, <laughs> astrophysics for for baby. Look at that. Can see, you can you show the I want to see the inside of one? Like, is it like is it do they do it basic enough where it's not like I mean it's it's let me put it this way. You're introducing the words and you are, so, but but it's not it's not like I, I mean, mean, hey, here's it's this, good. It, of and course, you learn as a parent, like I said, I'm one of the as, things that <laughs> I've been most impressed about Max's education and schooling so in, in comparison to anything that I ever got. Like I was I didn't get I don't know about you guys, I didn't get introduced to any sort of school structure until i was five mm -hmm. my son has been in in schools since he was three years old so or even two and a half actually if you count the the, the original one the uh, montessori right so we had montessori at two two and a half and then he went to regular school at three and four they teach him th like you think presidents like what is my son doing losing presidents yeah. but he already can see images and and connect names like oh lincoln like he'll know cool. so, so I, even though he, he probably can't give me a whole dissertation on it, I know that at, when he gets older, and as they teach that in classes older, like it, it'll probably, yeah, totally. it'll it'll sink well, in. Well, look you, at this book. Start with the first one, Doug. The, the, like the first picture or whatever. Whoever's clicking that, see, it says this is a ball. This ball has energy, and then you go to the next one. Keep going. This ball has zero energy. So and so you kind of explain. Yeah, it. that's great. This ball, the, the, all balls are made of atoms. There are. What does that say? Ne uh, neutrons. neutrons. Then they have electrons. Then it talks about you know how it's things yet. have mass. Oh my and, god, it's great. I mean, it's really cool. So yeah, it's great. yeah I'm like, and it's fun for me. I enjoy <laughs> reading these. You know, you should yeah. make this your shout out today because I, I did not know about this author. So throw that author up as a. I as, just found a it. I got, it was so cool. Who who did you just see it on Instagram and it yeah, got marketed to you? Somebody shared it. Stuff like that. Somebody shared it on Instagram that they like for their kids. And I'm like, what? They make yeah. books like this? So I yeah. went on I went on Amazon and they're I mean, I definitely did a lot of the uh, uh, programming in terms of music. And so <laughs> I, I did like all of the ACDC and Metallica lullaby that's awesome. stuff and it stuck. You know, and like that's the weird part is like and mix in with like classical music. Um, but, uh, yeah, like all that stuff, dude, if you can introduce it to him the right way, I feel like it, it's, it does promote, uh, interest later on. Totally. Isn't there research around, uh, classical music and learning? Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah there is, right? Yeah. Yes. You yeah. know, it has to do, you know what they, they, they think, it, well, so there's a lot of mystery around music and how it helps with oh my God. learning. Yeah. Part of it is the, the, the subconscious learning you get from the tempo and the beats. Mm -hmm. They think that mm -hmm. that contributes to your ability to conceptualize math. The other thing has to do with just how it lights up the whole brain. So it may improve communication between different regions in the brain, Damn. but there's a lot of mystery too, as to why music has such a, an effect on our, our so ability to process information. I, I wish I had like access to this one, uh, this, this video that explains, I think it's Mozart, uh, one of his main pieces, but um, they were talking about the genius of it because you could literally play it forward and backwards exactly the same. Mm. And like, <laughs> they're like what? basically upside down and it like all, all different directions. And it had a, a whole sequence that made sense. So it was like this, this very alien, like uh, ability he had to, to kind of, uh, string all of these notes together and it, it I don't know like I'll have to like add that in maybe the show notes I'll add the video that explains it, but it, it would just trip me out I'm super fascinated by music and the role it plays and I still think that there's so much that we haven't fully uncovered I mean I, I think you think you know that like uh, grocery stores play a very specific type of music to get you to shop longer and buy more. Yeah, they know more. you'll stay in longer. <laughs> yeah, I know. You can, you can play certain types for, for learning. I mean, it's just, I think that's really interesting that, that. You, we, I mean, I've told you guys that one of the coolest things I ever saw was my, my cousin who homeschools all her kids and they, they, the, the homeschooling teaches like over years 
a single song that they build on it yeah, he told that's us. teaching them the like history yeah. and a timeline. I'm like, oh my God, that's like, and I think that these kids have, are, are yeah. long, you know, disconnected from that now and could still recite that. Like the power of that is incredible. I mean, that, that has to be how we got this far for so long before there was pen and paper and yeah. places. Oh, hundred percent. Like, I mean, would, all that and like Jim quick, like when he was breaking all that down about memorizing things and associating and like creating visuals within like that memory. So you, you know, associate it. It's so much easier to listen, recall it. Listen, say the ABCs in your head right now yeah, without singing. Exactly. It. You're yeah, going to sing it. Yeah, yeah. It's just the way, <laughs> this is the way it is. It is. I know. Yeah, yeah. Hey, did you, uh, Justin, this is cool. So I, I saw this the other day. I thought you would find this interesting. It, I saw a, uh, a link um, with a uh, an image, right? It's a picture of the fastest animals in the world. So the fastest land animal, the fastest animal in water, and the fastest animal in the air. So do you guys know which one what they are? At land animal is probably easy. You guys probably know that. Well, the air is falcon. Yes, yeah. so there's a specific type of falcon. Specific <clears throat> kind, yeah, what is it? It's called the pregrine. Paragon. Per per pregrine. P r e g u r i n e. Land falcon. is the land is the cheetah. Cheetah. Okay, and then what was my other water? Yeah, dolphin. No. Oh, oh water. Hmm. It's fastest in the water. Yeah, it's not a dolphin. Sailfish. Oh. oh, sailfish. So here's what's crazy. So first off, these are on kilometers. I don't know how many miles this is. Maybe we can look this up. But the, the falcon can fit. Because they're so streamlined, I guess, huh? Well, so so I'm going to tell you what tripped me out, right? So let's start with the fastest, right? The the, the falcon. three hundred. It peaks out of 390 kilometers an hour. What is that in miles? So oh divided by God. two. Is that it? I mean, roughly. It's, I think it's like 2.2 kilometers per mile or something like that. I'm Didn't they model right. no, something in their oh, it's nose? It's very similar. It's very, it is? Yeah, it's very similar. It's like, what is Did it? Did you say 390 kilometers per hour? Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's 240 miles per hour. Oh, my God. So what is the math? So that's not right. So what no. is I think it's 0.6 or something like yeah. that. Oh, 0.6? Bro, around I was, there. I it was 290 dumb. miles an hour, an animal? Oh, my God. There's something specific, like, if you look, that they modeled, I think, jet airplanes the after. Airplane. Yeah, like, in their nose. Like, some kind of, like... The shape of also, the also, the way that they're... The way that they dive so so quick. Yes. Like, they had to have, like, something specific about their nose. Also, the way that they're shaped, if you look at them when they're peak speed and they're, how they the air moves around them, this is... They base the stealth bomber off of them. Oh, yeah. If you look at how it's kind of, like, a little bigger in the front... That's how we always up. advance, yeah. Technology. It's look crazy. At All right. So, so cheetah. Just wild. When you think cheetah, about it. look this up. Someone for me goes 120 kilometers an hour. Yes, yeah, so they were like 60. Like a cheetah is like 60 miles. No, an hour. that's faster than that. 74. 74 right. miles an hour. It's right. hella fast. You imagine you're on a freeway. Yeah. <laughs> cheetah runs. We were always told it was like 100 mile an hour. Yeah. You know, ability. But that's crazy. Yeah, that's still really fast. Here's what tripped me out: the sailfish. It's in water. Water is hard to go fast in. 110 kilometers an hour. It only goes. 10 kilometers slower than the cheetah Wow! in the water. Yeah, it's impressive. You know how much power you have to generate That's to go that nuts. fast in the water? That's insane. I wonder if that, that sail gives it some aerodynamic, well, obviously not uh, aero, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> torpedo <Water> dynamic. dynamic. <laughs> what do you say in the water? I don't that? know. Uh, yeah, that I mean, obviously air would make the most sense to be the fastest. Of course. It is interesting that the, the well, I mean, the water is slower. It's just not as. Way slower. Well, I mean, then the, of no, the air. But 10 I mean, kilometers? Yeah, then the. Um, That's nothing. Then land. Yeah, it's interesting. That's a lot of power. Hmm. Hey, I take know. a look at this picture here of a uh, falcon diving. Yeah. Tell a, me what it looks like. It's a stealth bomber. Yeah, I told you. Yeah. Right there, up in the left. Wow. Uh, Actually, in fact, there should be a, a there's a picture I guarantee comparing them. Scroll down. Is that one right there? Oh yeah, right there. Look oh, at its. Uh, oh my god. Yeah, see, it's identical. identical. Look up its nose, Doug. So I don't sound crazy. Now they, you know, they hunt Look other up birds. Its nose. Yeah, yeah, like they use yeah. the some some kind of like valve in its nose to. They're big too. To they're advance. bigger than what you like you would so think. Fighter they're, jet. They're massive. So they expect. they hunt birds, right? They fly real high and they see another bird, another fast bird, and they. Yeah, that that's the crazy part. I always forget that. Like birds are are they they prey on each other all the time. Yeah. Those those yeah. You ever seen uh, falcons and some eagles. of the some of those? I don't know what they're called. I could get some into that kind of harpy eagles or yeah, I know. Yeah, like, yeah. Like I, could, I don't know if I could ever be birds the bird watching prey. guy who's yeah. like got his little boat out and he's in his backyard. And he's I'll like, watch that. Yeah, but I would totally do. Yeah, that. but would you even know what's going carnage. on? Jeez, it's so fast. Have know. you seen? Have you seen those? I think they're called harpy. There's like harpy eagles and golden eagles. They're so big, they like pick up goats and shit and <laughs> throw them off cliffs. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I always, I always go back to that one culture that uses them to hunt. Oh, the Mongolian. Yeah, the Mongolian yeah, culture. Yeah, it's so never badass. It's so badass. Do you know that the who was it? 
I want to say the U.S. or it might have been England was looking at using dolphins as a way to attack submarines. I believe in World War II. The U.S. and I think the Russians too. Yeah, yeah. They put like they put like, put like an explosive on the yeah, dolphins. Yeah, yeah. And they had. I think they they even used like torpedoes and things and and I mean did like suicide missions with them. I know. Dude, I can't Crazy. believe we forgot to talk about why we were talking about the whole vegan diet yeah. culture and so that. To oh, not bring up. I okay. You sent over. First of all, you talked about the other day the doctors that are getting paid. Okay? Doctors and dietitians yeah. that are getting paid by the food industry to promote and bullshit. What I didn't tell you guys, you sent yep. over this article. It just came out. So just about I, this was like literally last week. Just not even not even a week over a week or two ago. Uh, one of our buddies, uh, Brad Jensen, uh, who he is. I'm trying to remember the name of his podcast. Um, he's been on our. I think we had him on our show a long time ago. Or he came on here and he entered him and his sister interviewed us. Do you remember who I'm oh, talking yeah, about? Oh yeah, I recall. Buff guy, recovered from a drug addiction. Yeah, so yeah, that yeah, great, great story, guy. great guy. guy. Um, he did like this shout out of listing off like, you know, five people you must follow in fitness. And uh, you know, I always appreciate it when people give us love and shout us out that way. But then there's always somebody in their list. I'm just like, ah, man, I don't know. He shouted that guy out. Oh. And I actually had this, like, I wanted to send something One to him. One of the him, fake doctors. And I wanted to send something to him, but I was like, ah, you know, whatever. Like, I'm not like that. Like, I'm not hating no. somebody. I don't have to. But now that that came out, yep. like, I have to go. I have to reach out to him. Maybe he'll hear this. I know he listens to the show. Like, that guy is a piece of shit. I knew he was a piece of shit. <laughs> I knew he was a piece of shit when we first had an encounter with him yes. over a year and a half, two years ago. He's so annoying. <laughs> Where we got into it over, I don't even remember what, what it was over. Was it cardio that we were getting into it with him he over? He just, okay, so his name on social Arrogant media. Fuck. I don't you like can, that guy. Anybody who follows him, go ahead and send him this clip. Be like, yes. they were talking shit. You should, you should go after them. He's a puke. Please come after us. Yeah. Uh, his name, Dr. Ids, is it? I-D-Z. And he gets on there and he's super arrogant and like wears his lab blah. coat and his videos blah, 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 and, blah. and then you know sugar is fine blah 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 the vaccine good for you blah blah anyway I got in a debate with I don't remember what it was a while ago I'm like this is bad information and we went back and forth and he was such a arrogant well you know I have a PhD and blah 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 anyway well it turns out you're one of the people that are paid off so yeah how did that come like how yourself. did you how did you come across that Max Lugavir like? posted so the the investigative journalists who, fi who found out these influencers were being paid off yeah listed i guess some of them as the ones that he uncovered yeah. and this you've been of. outed fool what's his uh following he's got a big following he's got too. a big following what's he up to now i i don't know you know and by the way i, mean, I would want, love to talk i want to him. our listeners to fuck him i'd love <laughs> I wouldn't, i'm gonna give him i wouldn't even give him the opportunity to do that fuck him we 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 we've had a lot of people the reason why I really wanted to bring him up too, I know it's like I sound salty as fuck over this, but this this is a, a guy who I know we've been tagged many times where people think he's great or has good information because he's countered some of the information that we've talked yeah. about. Mm. And we've gone back and forth with this dude for over a couple of years now. And it's like at this point we're like, whatever about it. But the fact that this came up now, now it's I'm I'm fucking coming after him. Two hundred and forty eight thousand followers. Wow. Yeah. So he's got a quarter million people that are paying attention to him. Yeah. But he's also so. on TikTok. He's got a lot of followers there. Yeah, even more there. Yeah. yeah. Cause he is. He's like a TikTok doctor. Oh, That's yeah. exactly what yeah. I put him in. Yeah. Put him yeah. in the category of TikTok. Yeah, go doctor. back to TikTok and stay there. Yeah. yeah. So you're a yeah. punk. So, <laughs> so so happy that came out, dude, on something like that. But you know what? I'm not surprised. How, I'm not either. How crazy is this? Like how this stuff unfolds like this. I know somebody it's who like poetic justice. We got into it with it years ago, and just something didn't uh, didn't didn't rub any of us the right way. And here, by the way, we have people that are friends of ours who we disagree with stuff. Like Lane Norton's a perfect example of someone who doesn't align with our exact messaging. But I have so much respect, and I like that guy. Why? Because like, he has integrity. That's right. And, me, and and we can have that conversation. This guy was not like that. This was some of this guy that was a punk. The most – look, I don't like um, people who put out bad stuff anyway who just uh, – who don't have integrity, right? Nobody likes that. But what I really hate, I really hate, is that people who have letters by their name, PhD, doctor, whatever, who also have terrible integrity and who are out there putting out bad information. Why? Yeah. Way more dangerous. Everybody. Way dangerous. Yeah. Way more dangerous. And, and it's like, you know, you went through all that schooling. You did the- If you did. The, what is the oath if called? The Hippocratic Oath that they do? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you come out and you're a piece of shit. It's like when you're a scientist. Hey, I, I tell you what though. If you did. Just sling and Remember the other oil. guy too who, was the, who created the fucking- rubber band bar thing that wanted to be on the show a hundred times. Everybody talks about him too. That is all like steroided jacked out and says like, I'd get it from the, from the band bar. Just my band. Yeah. 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 
I found out later that that dude like did one of those like you know it online fake universities to have, oh, yeah. have his degree. <laughs> so I wouldn't even put it if that guy has if this doctor has that kind of wow. integrity to sell out like this. Don't for a minute think that he's not the same guy too that would get some bullshit degree just so he says he has Maybe. a PhD. So BSU. Yeah. 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 yeah on a po more positive note, Justin, you're correct. Yeah. So when designing jets, because <laughs> when they do supersonic speeds, the engine can choke because of the airflow. Oh. And so there's some special baffle or cone inside the Falcon's nose that breaks up Restricts the air the somehow. Air. Yeah. yeah. So that you don't have that issue. So they designed that into the, the fighter so plane. Interesting. Yeah. Wow. Even more interesting Validated. is how they figured that out. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> I know. Like running those speeds and then figuring out like the thing's probably crashing or not or like. Well, I mean, think about it. How's the bird gonna breathe going that fast? Yeah. they still have to breathe. It's like it's gonna hold. Yeah, you haven't skydived yet before. That's actually one of the hardest Hell, parts. Oh, yeah. one, one of the hardest parts is when you when you jump out is the air is blowing so fast in your mouth you almost kind of feel like you can't breathe. Yeah, and you can't like it's a weird feeling. Yeah, that weird. makes me want to jump out of a plane even more. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I knew you wouldn't anyway. So who cares? I did it once. So I'm looking good, dude. <laughs> oh no, yeah, man, yeah, it's like it's like the other day when uh, you guys made me go on the fucking boat, dude. <laughs> that is, this is not for me, It was guys. a normal cruising No, it wasn't. It was a sailboat. <laughs> and I got so freaking seasick. Oh, it was terrible. Dude, we, we can't take you anywhere, It's a dude. bummer, dude, because it wasn't even, anywhere. like, windy or anything. It was windy, and it was going sideways. Anyway, listen, I get, I get seasick hella easy. No, yeah. Was, I, took, I felt bad for you, bro. Bro, I, I took Zofran and everything. Yeah. I have, like, like it was a prescription. That's what's crazy. But you got you, to be a captain for the You day, actually took medication. Bro, you still it hit that. me. Hard and then yeah, the, and once, I, it, and once then it gets it, you too, oh. impossible to, to recover. And then the yeah. captain dude's like, he saw me, he saw my face, like, you all right? I'm like, nope. And he nope. goes, come up here, grab the <laughs> wheel, a little, a little green. Help. So the whole time I'm, you know, steering the ship, looking like I'm awesome, but in reality, I'm just holding on for dear life. <laughs> like, please, God, don't let me throw up in front of my staff. <laughs> This will totally make me look I knew like it because we're throwing jokes. And he's like, uh. yeah. yeah no, no. <laughs> I'm like, oh, Sal's he's not, not firing good, back. Dude, something's yeah. wrong with him, yeah, exactly. dude. Exactly. Hey, Terrible. I want to uh, give a shout out, or hopefully this guy hears this. I I don't remember his name. It's probably better that I don't remember his name. Um, but if you you're listening to this, uh, email our team. Okay, email at, at uh, info at mindpumpmedia.com. I got pulled over by a CHP, and he could have been a total prick to me, and was like super cool. And I didn't get to thank him or say anything like that. And he like he totally went right back to his bike and left. And I'm like, oh man, and I, I and was a, a mind pump fan, obviously, because when he saw he was fit, yeah, yeah, no, that's not why. I mean, he was he was, but yeah. that's not why it was. It was like he saw the, the name, and I was like, oh, that's crazy. Like, and then he didn't even get a chance to talk to me. He left. So if you email in, I would love to be able to thank you or talk to you. So yeah, shout out to that CHP. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We we appreciate what they yeah, do. Yeah, we my, definitely appreciate. Yeah, that. my brother in law is a police officer, and he'd tell me stories and stuff. They do I'm like, man, I hate I hate how sometimes the media goes gets so 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 sour on police officers because you go do that job man they got to deal oh, with the man. craziest shit dude you know impossible what I mean? job yeah i mean come on no i mean i think of like police officers and teachers are like some of the probably the the um least valued people least that have yeah least yeah. appreciated positions that do some of the most important work to our culture and it's unfortunate that uh they are undervalued for what they deliver for us and because you have one bad teacher or one bad cop or bad experience and all of a sudden like everybody it's just like it's so terrible if you have a bad you have one bad experience with a personal trainer to think that like all trainers are scumbags or bad yeah people. but there's like, certain fuck. jobs that yeah. that most people wouldn't want to do because precisely because they're dangerous and scary police officer go fight overseas you know when people criticize other people join the military go fight like if they what are you doing dude Crazy. i'm not seeing you sign up to yeah, go over there yeah. Yeah. And do that Makes shit no and put your me. life on the line. Firefighters, like, really? Yeah. You know, so like, you know, this, these are jobs that most people would, I wouldn't want to be a cop. I don't know if I, I, how, I, how I'd be able to deal with that. That's yeah. tough. And yeah. that's a job we need. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I feel like today, more than ever, the, the bullshit that they have to take. Totally. You know, like, just because they make them, like, fit in the lines, like, so much is so, like, crazy to yep. me, like, how much they're scrutinized. So totally. shout out to him. Much right. love. And then, and then the, the shout out to the author of the books that I got, is Chris F-E-R-R-I-E, uh, -E -R -R -E, and he's the author of Science for Babies, Science for Babies series, really good stuff. Your sleep plays a massive role in your health, your ability to burn body fat, build muscle, and even just think clearly. Well, well, there's a product called Sleep Breakthrough that has ingredients have been shown to just improve the quality of your sleep. 
Now, these aren't crazy sedatives. You don't wake up groggy. They do nourish your body, though, and they do encourage more restful sleep, the kind of sleep that you go to bed, you wake up in the morning, you don't wake up in between, you just feel amazing. It's all natural. It's a great product. Go check it out. Go to sleepbreakthrough.com forward slash mind pump. Use the code mind pump 10 and get a discount. All right, back to the show. Our first caller is Tucker from California. Tucker, what's up, what's up Tucker? Man? How you doing, gentlemen? Good. What's happening? It's good to hear. Nothing, nothing. I, uh, so I actually uh, been a fan of the, the podcast for a while now. I uh, listen to it a lot on my uh, my drives from uh, here at USC to back to Colorado. Um, and when I was one of the drives, I was like, I have been having this uh, this like trap pain for ever now. And I was like, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna submit a submit a question to you guys and see if I just happen to get get a response and I did. Um, but basically it's, I have this, like this kind of trap pain and like almost like forward, forward shoulder. It feels like I had submitted a video, uh, to the thing as well. But like when I do pull-ups and stuff, it almost feels like I have to like compensate on one side. Um, or even when I'm doing like a bench press, it feels like I have to like move my right hand further away and, um, and like almost like kind of drive my shoulder back in a different way. And I, uh, it's, trying to see if you guys had any advice for that or what you guys think it could be or did you have an or injury any sort of an injury sport injury or anything like that i did i uh had a pretty traumatic hand injury my sophomore year of college i uh, had some glass go, go through my hand injured all like my entire hand all the muscle artery punctured all the nerves all the tendons everything so it's still getting some feeling back in the fingers but um during that time i couldn't like my hand was paralyzed so i couldn't do any work on my left side so i did a lot of work on my right side and i'm kind of scared that i might have overcompensated that side and then when i was getting back to it i was trying to do different kinds of you know pull variations or whatever whatever it was and i had to like use a wrap because i didn't have mobility in my fingers to pull yeah um yeah i don't know do you have any of our programs right now i do not okay map symmetry bro that's what map symmetry. Yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll send map symmetry over to you. Uh, and have you, have you ever trained like a whole, like a whole training block, meaning for like months of unilateral work or one side of everything? No, I've, I've never done. I've always just, I've done like some unilateral stuff when I work out. Like this morning I did like one unilateral exercise, but I've never done it as an entire block yeah, for yeah. a period of time. Yeah, I think you'll get tremendous benefit. I mean, I can see on the right side. I can see what you're talking before, about. Before doing that, though, let me ask you some uh, more some more questions. Do you have any neck injuries or neck pain? My, I always have to crack my rec, right side of my neck. Okay. Yeah, I always have to go like, I just crack yeah. right there when I, where do do you, that. when I do that side, it does not. Where do you feel, can you point to the trap pain? Like, I, I guess kind of, on the top? it's not as severe right now. But then also sometimes like kind of, I okay. guess, with a hole in my shirt, it's, but um, right here too. Yeah. It's, I don't think it's your trap. I, I think it's the maybe levitator scapulae muscle. So, so it's one of the muscles that elevates the shoulder blade. But I don't think it's a muscle issue though. I think it might be coming from your neck. So what happens when a muscle feels chronically tight or like it kind of hurts, oftentimes what's happening is there's a um, instability that your body is sensing. Mm -hmm. And so it tightens okay. muscles, it tightens muscles up around the instability to provide stability. But then what happens, like if you were flexing your bicep constantly, that muscle will start to get tight and kind of feel fatigued. Then it feels better to press on it. You'll get temporary right. relief, but then it kind of, it kind of comes back. So I, I feel like this is coming from your neck. I think doing movements that will help with traction through the spine might be a good idea. Uh, I think uh, like the wall test in MAPS Prime mm. would probably be pretty good. Yeah. I think a prone cobra exercise where you depress the scapula and create length in your spine where you're kind of lifting the very, very top of your head and trying to create length throughout <clears throat> the spine might help. Okay. Um, I, I don't think you should do, I don't think you should do any pull down movements for now. I think rowing is okay, but I would go really light and I would focus on bringing the shoulder blades back, but down. Yeah, all unilateral work, though. Back, man. but down. Really squeezing back and down and going really light. Because what you're trying to do is create length in the spine. So you want to create length between the shoulder and the spine. But I don't want you to create length by 
d- turning your head uh, too often or crack. The cracking of the neck will feel okay or feel better because you're probably articulating small joints that are also tight with some stabilizer muscles, but that's not going to be a, a like a permanent yeah. um, solution. So I don't know if you want to answer that. Well, I just think Prime Pro is a little more specific to um, like neck and upper back, uh, any kind of like uh, instability and, and addressing any kind of range of motion issue. Um, so I think going through that would be a good idea too, even if it's like, so we have net cars, but just finding out kind of limitations with that and maybe some restrictions in terms of like the ability of you to rotate with your neck and have uh, control and strength there and support. And then also too, with the shoulder blades in terms of like each one of um, it. So it takes you through all the different um, abilities of elevating, depressing, retracting and protracting, and just kind of taking it through those ranges of motion uh, to sort of, get it to respond appropriately maybe sometimes like it's just not responding appropriately and so we need to strengthen better movement patterns and really that's what you know the, the work needs to go in that direction for you then to to go okay. into you know training with weights and be able to add I got a bit of load. He, he might need to take a like a lacrosse ball to kind of release to to first that might help open up yeah. so the first thing i would do is probably take a lacrosse ball against the wall or the floor if you can handle that pressure and kind of roll that area that gives you temporary relief that'll get the cns to kind of calm down a little bit then i would go to the My- Maps Prime Pro movements that Justin's referring to, and then I would, when I go to training, I would train map symmetry. And when I train, I would take the advice that Sal is saying, which is really, really pay attention when you get onto that side of retracting and depressing the shoulder and like taking the movement nice and slow. Mm-hmm. Don't get obsessed with trying to increase weight, get add more weight, add more weight. Get obsessed with the technique and the form of it. I mean, that would be. I'm gonna. I'll try something right now through video. It might be kind of hard, but you can see me, right, Tucker? Yes, I did. Okay, so put your, so it's your, what is it, your right arm? Yeah. Okay, so extend your right arm up above your head, nice and straight. Really straighten your elbow out. Yeah, lock your elbow. Okay, but keep your head straight because I see you turning here. So try and and press your body down. Okay, now while while keeping your arm and everything elevated, can you bring your shoulder down? Can you shrug your shoulder down? Yeah, just like this. Oh, okay, try that again. So lift your arm up. Now really okay. now so while all the way up. while locking your elbow out, drop your drop your shoulder down. Bring your shoulder down. Bring it down, yeah, down, yeah, down, yeah, down. Yeah. Keep try, pressing he's, try, down. he's trying right now. Okay. Depressing it. Now yeah. while you're depressing the shoulder with that happening, this is what I want you to do with your head. Without turning your head, now bring your left ear down towards your shoulder. Without turning my head. Without <laughs> turning your head. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. Press your arm up and drop your shoulder. Really drop your shoulder. Really pull it down. That's it. It's real hard, but I'm do trying, it. I'm trying. Okay. Now yes. bring your now bring your ear down slowly on the other side, and you'll feel a little bit of relief, or you should. Yeah. I mean, he's already, now he's, he's, he's anchoring out. it. You feel that? Okay. I want you to hold that. Keep bringing the shoulder down as hard as you can. So that's Levator scale. Yeah. Though, yeah. yeah. And notice, keep, you notice how challenging that is just to do that. Yeah. Now yeah, it's, it's so hard. Okay. Now <laughs> keep doing that. Keep doing that, but keep that elbow locked. Keep that elbow locked out. Yeah, lock the elbow. Yeah, but drop the shoulder. Drop the shoulder. Okay, now slowly come out and come back down to regular position. You can put your arm down at your side and just kind of chill there for a second. Do you notice any difference in how that area feels? Does it feel a little bit better? Move around. I don't know. Test it a little bit. It almost feels like it wants to like like kind of pull me back like up in a way. Like it feels like. Like my posture wants to be kind of recorrected. Yeah. Recorrected. Did you way. did you notice any relief or like you were stretching some of the areas that were tight? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I yeah. felt it was like it was almost a workout too in a way as well yeah. for like back here and then there was a stretch so kind of going on here. There's some instability there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah there's strengthen. some instability there, and so so you know I like the wall test better than anything else that we said because you really are going to have but you got to do it right. It's going to create some some natural traction in the spine. So traction is the spine trying to lengthen, but okay. not passively. It's you with your muscles in the wall test, creating this tall position, yeah. holding everything. It's stacking everything control, where it needs to be. And pulling things down, and that'll help kind of um, create the the space where your body's going to feel a little more stable. Is that, is that in Prime Pro 2 or only in Prime? That that's specific only movement is only in prime. I that's think. only in prime. So oh, then, okay. so we're gonna I guess give, we'll give you both. <laughs> yeah, we're going to have to give you a bunch you get of three share. programs. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. So uh, I almost want you to get in the forum too so I can actually see you do the movement. Because one of the things that's really important, you notice when Sal was telling you that the, the, the tendencies that you had 
to want to move your head and then you notice your elbow wanted to break. The key to this is 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 recognizing that. If you just go through the movement where you're just like no, if you, uh, yeah. lift, lift my arm and then I tilt my head Nothing. and then you if you allow yourself to cheat the movement right. and it's not really difficult and hard, we're not working on that stability. We're not firing those neurons over that area and lighten it all up. And so you'll just deviate from that. So it is important how you do this. When you watch the videos in in Prime and Prime Pro, you'll hear the coaching cues that, that uh, Dr. Brink is doing with uh, you know one of us. It's so important that you you really pay attention to that when you do it. Because if you just kind of go through the motions, you're I not- I mean, gonna- what, what I did was very far from ideal because in a perfect world, I'd be there with you. I'd hold your elbow. Mm-hmm. I'd help you pull right. into position. I'd press on the muscle that I'm trying to get to relax. I'd help put you in where you need to. Well, and having so, a rigid surface, like a wall like that yeah. to give you feedback in terms of your spine yeah. uh, is going to be really helpful yeah, too. Yeah, but we'll send you all that stuff. But look at the wall test and do it exactly as it's laid out and try to create the feeling that we created here when I walked you through that movement uh, and do that before your workouts and then do symmetry. And, and, and by the way, like it's so, imp- it's so great. you you look like a young guy. So it's good that you're aware of this now and you're trying to address it. Cause you don't know how many 40, 50 year old clients oh, that we used to get that had this at, 20 years old yeah. just kept going about their life because they, they can't raise their arm all yeah then they can't do sh- and then to, uh, right. to to undo that when you're 50 is yeah, would, so much more it work. would take me months as a trainer so yeah. j- you know being aware of it now and already starting to work towards that is so important but yeah. stick to the unilateral work and in, in within, symmetry within f- listen honest to god within four to six weeks if you do it right you should notice pretty significant difference and I should I should keep my weight like more on the light side. I oh, just, yeah. I, yes. I know I should. I just it's Listen, still one of the biggest pains go, about those going to the gym and being like, I know I can lift so much more weight no. than this. Focus on like, muscle I, connection. I know as soon as I do my form, kind of twitching yeah. back. And yeah. Like, no, if you go he- if you go uh, heavier form. than you can uh, do with this, with what we're trying to do, your body's going to revert to its old recruitment pattern. Because right now you're stronger with a poor recruitment pattern than you are with a good or proper recruitment pattern. Exactly. So if you add weight, you're just going to go back to crappy recruitment patterns and you're going to strengthen them. You you're going to make them worse. You, you can still, I mean, this is a great time to like, a, you, you probably heard me talk on the show about tempo. Like this is a good time to really mess with tempo, slow down your tempo, get mm-hmm. a good squeeze at the top. You can still build muscle. Yeah, exactly. People think that, oh man, I got to do this rehab bullshit. I'm not going to get, I'm going to lose my muscle and I can't, can't, yeah. you know, you can still build muscle. You can still look great. Like, but just get obsessed with the technique now. Okay, perfect. And then also kind of quick question on that note is, is swimming okay? I'm a, I'm in a swimming class right now here at, here at USC and I, uh, do you think that's yeah. bad? Because I know I'm kind of going over my shoulder. I mean, it's, you're, it's an elective, so I can drop it pretty you're fi- easily. You're fine unless it's hurting you. Okay, listen, you're fine. You but here's an example of actually when you go through the exercises we're teaching, you should definitely do these those zone one stuff before you go do your swim class. Oh, yeah. Like it'll take it'll take you like right literally before. two or three minutes. Go like if, I'm sure there's a wall somewhere in the in the class. Like get against the wall warm up and prime yourself really well before that will make a, a big difference in your mechanics yeah. in the way you swim. I would prime before and after. Yes. And, you know, that'll, that'll be all right. That'll help. Okay. Perfect. I, uh, I appreciate you guys' time a lot. Also a quick side note. I, uh, Never grew up with a father figure, so kind of hearing the way you guys interact with like your kids and your wives and all that has kind of meant a lot to me. And just to like, I have honestly learned a lot from it. And I take it into like my various relationships that I've had with you know women at my age. So I I appreciate it a lot, you guys. You got it, dude. Thank Rad. you, man. Thanks, buddy. Thanks, dude. Of course. Enjoy the rest of your day. Take it easy. I guess mustaches are back in style. I see. Yeah, <laughs> it's a cool mustache. A lot of they kids are, yeah. with the with they the are. stashes. Yeah, yeah. I, um, uh, what he had. I mean, that's super common. What yeah. he feels. Um, and it oftentimes the way he explained it, it feels like it's it's typically instability in the in the neck or in the scapula, and all yeah, and then, all we're doing is we're trying for people watching and listening. All we're doing is essentially this is generally what's happening. You're telling the body it's safe mm-hmm. to move in the way that you need it to move. It's protective. Yes. I mean, your body's trying to protect you know any kind of instability, and it just exaggerates when you're doing your everyday uh, activities where you're just kind of sitting at your desk and you're leaning forward. And um, so this is something you know. The quicker he addresses this, the easier it's going to yeah. be for oh, him yeah. to alleviate. We didn't get the chance to see because he sent a video of him doing pull ups from behind. But a lot of times you also see this manifest in uh, the the uh, uh, in balance in their chest. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
mm-hmm. because he's got this slight rolling forward. So I had this, right? So I had, this is what I had in my twenties and I had this and the, I, what I noticed more than pain, cause I actually didn't get a lot of pain so much, but I did have the rolling of the shoulder and I had this massive discrepancy between um, my left and my yeah, right. So and you my, end up having this asymmetry when you go to yes, press. Yeah. Yes. So it's, it is very common, like where, where, where it manifests, how it feels to the person as far as like pain or they just mm-hmm. notice the imbalance or whatever like that. By the way, you know, what's really good at what I said with the spinal traction, Eldoa. Oh yeah, Eldoa. For people that don't know, Spinal coaches, traction, yeah, coaches and trainers, Eldoa is one of the best. You know what? You we actually have some on the Mind Pump TV channel. A yeah. couple really good ones. I think you even did a few of them. Huh? I did, yeah. and that is uh, traction through not passive but active, and it really makes a big difference for stuff like this. Yeah, I've done that. Our next caller is Madison from Indiana. Hi, Madison. How can we help you? Hi, hi guys. How are you? We're good. How Great. are you? Good. Um, this is crazy. I'm a little nervous, as most people are. So, <laughs> no problem. Justin's nervous too. Yep, I always am. <laughs> it's obvious. <laughs> How can we help you? Um, well, I guess I will get straight into my question. Um, a little bit of background. I have come from a big weight loss journey. Um, I do have to say thank you to you guys. I've done this three times in the last ten years of my life. I have lost and gained significant amounts of weight and um following your guys' advice is what's helped me keep it off so thank you so much you got it Uh, um but anyways so i had planned all this year to run power lift this fall um i did have the intention of leaning down a little more to about 145 uh, before I started it so that I had a little wiggle room to uh, eat so that I could get the most out of the program. Uh, but like I said, my email, long story short, that didn't happen. Um, I am currently sitting at about 155. Uh, and I'm just wondering how to approach starting the program with my nutrition um, since I don't have as much wiggle room as I had intended to have. Yeah, where, where, so yeah, there's there's more in your your uh, question that we can read, just so you know, for the audience that yes. you had lost a hundred pounds. You did it a lot through uh, OTF five days a week, and looked like you restricted calories. Where are your calories at right now? Um, currently, I'm maintaining at about twenty one hundred. Oh, you're not in a yeah, bad yeah, place, Madison. You yeah, you're in a good place. You mentioned. Do you mind if I read? If I talk a little bit more about the question that you sent in to the audience? Yeah, for sure. It says in here that you had developed a binge eating disorder. Yeah. Um, how is that now? Um, I'm actually just over a year binge free with very little urges, um, which is awesome. Um, I did recently, I find that when I try to intentionally cut, I get about three to four weeks consistently into the cut before I start noticing those binge thoughts coming back, um, which I like to prioritize my binge recovery over, uh, That's good. you know what I mean? Cutting. So I had to kind of bump the calories back up. And I think that's why I didn't get to where I wanted to be. Madison, that's, you're the, doing a great job. That's though. exactly yeah, what you, that's right. A smart mentality. All right. First off, that's you, that's exactly what you should do. You, you need to prioritize that over any kind of aesthetic goal or calorie goal. In fact, if you find that counting calories and tracking things is a trigger for you, the last thing you should do is track your calories and count things. I don't think you should do that at all if you find that as a trigger. You mind if I ask you a question, Madison? Yeah, for sure. And you can and I want you to answer honestly, okay? Yeah. Um do you do you love yourself? I do. I'm still um, working on it, but I definitely do more than I used to. Okay. What comes up for you when you want to binge? What, what, what is the feeling? Is it the distraction of it or is it the, the lack of control feeling? Um, I think it's the lack of control. Um, I definitely am known to be a control freak in my life for sure. Um, and I think it's also the fear of having to restrict forever, Yeah. which I know I don't have to, but like I said, I've done, I've overly restricted for so long um, 
that the thought of gaining that back does kind of trigger that for me. Yeah. Um, we don't need to go deep into this, but, uh, sometimes what happens is that people either, they have a, a, a relate, a relationship with restrictions and control, and it could come from a lot of different places, like feeling like you were too controlled as a kid or have, feeling like you had no control. So you put a lot on yourself, a lot of parameters. And then what happens is you rebel against it. And there's a version of you that's rebelling and it's probably a young version of yourself. Um, and so you need to tell that person that it's okay, that it's safe now. They don't have to do that anymore, that you appreciate that they were there for you, but you don't need them to do that anymore. And then what I want you to do is I want you to work mm -hmm. out and eat in a way that is unstructured. I know that sounds crazy. You can follow the program that we laid out, but I don't want you to put too many parameters. Yeah. I don't want you to put parameters on your diet because uh, that's going to result as, as it has in the past, like you're feeling confined and the rebellion is going to put you in the opposite direction. Okay. What I want you to do literally, literally is I want you to eat when you're hungry. I want you to not eat when you're hungry and I don't want you to worry about how much you eat. I just want you to eat foods that are healthy. So eat as much yeah. as you want, eat as much as you want. Just pick foods that are going to nourish you. And this is the way that I want you to approach it. Don't approach it from a restriction mentality. These are the only foods I can eat. I can't eat these other foods. These are healthy. These are unhealthy. That's not what I want you to do. What I want you to do is say, I'm hungry. I'm going to eat. I'm just going to take care of myself. So here's the foods that I'm going to eat. And that's it. And don't restrict. Don't cut. Don't tell yourself, I got to stop eating. I'm eating too much. Don't judge what happened after the meal. You just eat until you're satisfied. I want you to learn what that feels like to feel satisfied. It's very different than feeling stuffed. Satisfied is a different feeling. It's like 70% of stuffed. So just wait, just learn how to understand what that feels like. Eat until you're satisfied. And then all I want you to do with your workout is try to get strong. Mm. That's it. And I don't want you to worry about the scale. Yeah. I don't want you to worry about the scale. I don't want you to worry about the mirror. This is a season of self-care. Okay. And yeah. at the at the end of it, you're going to get what you want. But the irony is you can't chase what you want because you won't get it. So stop chasing the, I want to look a particular way or weigh a particular way. That's going to make you go in the opposite direction. Just, I'm going to get strong. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get strong. I'm going to eat when I'm hungry. I'm going to stop when I'm satisfied. And I'm going to eat foods that nourish my body So because I want to take care of myself. Just start there. That's all I want you to do. Start there. That that'll That'll put you in the right direction. Anything else is going to probably result in you feeling too confined or controlled or um, like you're being tyrannized, and then you're going to rebel. That small side of you, that little version of you, that little girl version of you is going to say, I'm out of here. I, gotta, I, gotta, I, I don't want to feel this anymore. I'm going to do what I want type of deal, and then it's, you're going to be in conflict with that person. So that's where you need yeah. to start. If you were my client, I wouldn't have you track anything. Two, two things to add to that. One, uh, since you're already following Powerlift, which, by the way, I think is a perfect program. That's the perfect, for, perfect yeah. program for you to follow right now. Uh, I'll, we're going to put you in the forum for free if you're not already in there, so we can keep an eye on on this journey. Okay, so I'm going to have yeah, that would be amazing. Yeah, we're going to have Doug put you in there. And here's the thing that's cool, just to add to what Sal was saying, is that if you can do this, if you can eat and feed yourself like you love yourself and nourishing your body and thinking like that and not obsessing over, oh, how many calories was that? And not worrying about that. You're, it's amazing what the body will naturally do for you. It, mm -hmm. When you have a great lifting session and you hit a new PR, you'll find out you're probably a little bit hungrier and you eat a little more, which is okay because guess what? Those calories will go to building muscle. And guess what? When you build some more muscle, it speeds the metabolism up. So then you'll probably naturally lean out a little bit also. It's amazing when we allow the body to do what it's supposed to do, we don't abuse it and we let it talk to us on what it needs and we just focus on the training and get stronger. So this way will actually get you to the goal that you ultimately want, whether that's some arbitrary number of 10 more pounds off, I guarantee you'll get the body you're chasing, the physique that you might be chasing. That will happen regardless of like the weight or cut. None of that stuff needs to happen if you focus this way and just get strong following the program. Uh, it'll it'll work out the way you want it to Madison, work out. Madison, when, when, after you have those, those when you feel like you're getting triggered, you're going to move in that direction. And let's say you do. Let's say you do move in that direction. Afterwards, how do you feel about yourself and what happened? 
after I've binged. Yeah. Um, I definitely don't feel good. Um, I do give myself more grace now than I used to for sure. Okay. Um, so yeah, like I said, the last year I've definitely worked on that a lot and I'm really proud of myself. And I guess I thought because I was doing so well in recovery that I was ready to cut. Um, but like I said, I got about four weeks in and I was like, I'm not sure if this is what, yeah. if I'm ready for this yet. That's great. So, yeah, that's yeah. great yeah. self-awareness. Yeah, I, you're, I really, have empathy for that side of you. Yeah. Okay. So in other words, like look at that side of you and be like, you know what? You've, you've protected me for a long time and I appreciate that. I don't need that anymore but I appreciate you being there and trying to protect me. That's the conversation you should have. And, and the last thing I'm going to say is this, Madison. Uh, if you do what I'm saying, okay, you're going to get the look that you want. Now, I don't want you to do it to get the look. This is, this is the irony of what I'm saying because if you do it for the look, it's not going to work. But just trust that you're going to look the way you want if you do this for the reasons that I said. That's the only way to get to get there. That's the only way, but it has to be true. It can't be fake. It can't be like, well, I'm going to do this thing so I can look this way. You got to be like, I'm going to do this thing. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to care what the result is, but I'm here to assure you that the result's going to be a healthy, vibrant looking version of yourself. You're, you're absolutely crushing it though. I want to point that out. Yeah. I mean, your, your level of self-awareness, your journey, where, where you came from, what you're doing right now, the fact that you've been bench free for a year, uh, yeah, your, your mindset to go to power lift. I mean, like yeah. you're, you're winning yeah. on all accounts right now. This is just like the next level. If you were a client that we try to take you to, I mean, you're and putting you in the forum so we can keep an eye on you, uh, and just communicate with <laughs> yeah, us. Just trust it, your intuition. Just, with us. You're, yeah. You're just let great. us know how you're doing uh, every month. I, I can't wait to see how this, how this is for the next six months for you. Cause I think you're crushing it. Yeah. I mean, I'm excited too. I, the thought of not tracking, does. I don't think I've ever done that for more, at least since I lost weight for more than like a week at a time. So the thought of giving up that control is slightly hard, but I think it'll be good. And I think I can do it. So. You're, you're ready. You're, you're ready. And you have us. So yeah. we're going to be with you through that. So if you do have mm -hmm. challenges with it, yeah. tag us, right? It's right, right to us in the forum. Yeah. It's going to feel Trust in it. scary, but freeing. It really, it's like taking off the training wheels on your bike. Yeah. At first, you're kind of scared, but then you're like, oh my God, I can go real fast and I can do really cool stuff. So that's what's going to, that's on the other <laughs> end of this. Now, should I finish power lift when, after I've not tracked, at what point would it be beneficial to me to start tracking again? Never. Or would I need to? Never. Or? Hopefully you never have to. Never. never. Nope. Ho hopefully the goal is you, you trust this process and you feel better and you continue to look better and you feel more free than you've ever You're felt. Most, really in tune with your body this way. Most women, okay, if they do it this way, will walk around between 18 to 22, 23% body fat, which is lean, sculpted, and shapely. Most women, mm -hmm. their body will fall right in right in that body fat percentage range without ever tracking a single calorie. Tracking becomes necessary when you start to push your body beyond healthy. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's when it starts to become uh, more yeah. more necessary. But in your case, you just you're you're going to get what you want if you just do it this way, and you'll never have to track. Okay, I mean that would be amazing. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So. It is amazing because that's what's going to happen. Yep. We're going to have Doug get you in the forum. We'll see you in there. You got this. Yeah. Well, thank you guys so much. I really appreciate it. You got it, Madison. Right. Well, that's good self-awareness because uh, oh, man. most she's, people would have just oh, yeah. she's white-knuckled it. You know? She's killing it, bro. I yeah. mean, even where her calories are right now, for, especially coming from somebody who uh -huh. – did it with the aggre aggressive yeah, thought cut. Oh, yeah. yeah. When she said 2100 and she's 5'5", 157. She's actually in a- She's part, fine. Yeah. yeah. Her her weight probably she's is- a good amount. Her weight is already actually in a good spot. I bet if she just, like like you said, eat, eat, the, eat when you're hungry, feed yourself good foods, train hard, get strong, she'll have this beautiful exchange. Yep. Mm -hmm. of she probably won't- move that much on the scale she'll just get leaner stronger tighter and yep. like feel amazing yep. she's doing really good our next caller is john from california john what's up man How what's up john you? how's it going fellas good hey. what's happening thanks for taking my call i'll just get right into my question real quick 
Uh, I'm 41, six feet tall, 240 pounds, uh, about 14 and a half percent body fat, according to a DEXA scan. Uh, I feel great. Strength is good. Uh, don't really have much, many aches or pains. Uh, cardio is good enough for what I do, hiking, walking, stuff like that. Uh, run through power lift, symmetry, maps 15. Uh, and just a quick update. I finished anabolic and now I'm doing symmetry again. I was able to gain five pounds of muscle after sim or sorry, after anabolic last time and no change in body fat. And, uh, I attribute that to that you guys and your programs. And I'm really happy with the results. Um, I'm on TRT working with MP hormones. Um, my question is, is there any downside to carrying that much muscle in terms of like longevity and health span? Uh, I definitely enjoy heavier lifting, like the five by five style, even though I have done the, um, like symmetry, this is my second time. So, um, but like, since I've built this much muscle, is there, should I be doing anything different to kind of change my focus? Maybe like a maps cardio that puts a little less emphasis on building muscle and, um, or like a maps 15 where I do, you know, 15 minutes and then kind of do some cardio stuff for health. Yeah. We're going to put you on, we're going to put you on maps Pilates. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Sounds maps good. Breathitarian. I mean, John, how do you, how do you feel like joints, uh, movement, like mobility, the ability to sit down? Like, I mean, are you, do you feel good? Overall pretty good. Um, I definitely could use a little bit more mobility stuff in um like shoulders and um ankles mostly but no pain really just how's your um, stamina just stamina's fine like i go on hikes and stuff and i don't have any problems there i, I a lot of times i do it with a weighted vest even and just just no problem so, i go on 15 mm -hmm. minute walks three times a day after each meal basically and you know brisk walks but overall yeah i'd say you're in a pretty good yeah, what are you what are you concerned about you just too, too um, much attention from the ladies <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> no i'm married so that, i don't i don't need any of that but um, yeah. well, that could be a that is the concern <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah okay no i mean i guess i could be guilty of comparing myself i know sal you're like 205 or 10 pounds so like i hear i see myself at 240 and i'm like whoa i'm Maybe way bigger than too bulky, Sal? but what you're <laughs> he's, like, he's like, I'm like, wait a minute, yeah. wait, why am I so much bigger than Sal? Like, no, okay, so you, look, don't, you know what? Hey, you know what? Sal's life, he's like obsessed yeah. with the gym, dude. You don't want to yeah. be that. Guy. No, listen, listen. Here's okay. So here's the general question that I hear: is is there an issue with a lot of muscle mass and longevity? Right. Mm -hmm. That's the that's the main general question. Is that is that correct, John? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. Just a good question. Yeah. It is. This is a great question. Yeah. Okay. So uh, muscle mass is very strongly associated with longevity, meaning the more muscle you have, the longer you're probably going to live. Now, of course, people then say, well, what do you mean? What about a bodybuilder or a power lifter or a strong, you know, man, uh, athlete? Like what about those people? That's, and to that, I say, look, those are, those are extremes. Any extreme pursuit, you are going to trade longevity for performance if whatever, if you build a certain amount of muscle naturally, it's probably going to be healthy. But what you need to look at are the methods that you're using to get to that muscle. And that'll tell you more about your longevity than the muscle itself. Great so point. what does that mean? Well, let's say you're 240 pounds, you're 14% body fat, you're eating pretty healthy, you're training, you're, you're doing your cardiovascular training, you feel good, but you want to gain another 10 pounds of lean body mass. So now you're going on a bulk and you're really pushing the calories and it's hard to eat that many calories, but you're kind of forcing yourself. And maybe now you're going to the gym and you're, you're pushing weights that are borderline, you know, injury risk is starting to get up high. You're starting to feel your joints ache a little bit. And then maybe you push your TRT a little bit, you know, you go from your normal dose to a little higher because you want the extra lean body mass. Well, now you're sacrificing longevity for performance. So it's really about the methods used to get where you want, not the muscle itself. Mm -hmm. Some people can sit around, you know, like you, I don't know necessarily what your lifestyle looks like, but if you have the genetics that allows you to carry 240 pounds at a relatively lean body fat percentage, and you're not doing these crazy extreme things where you're going beyond the longevity and just pushing extreme performance, that's healthy for you. Yeah. There's going to be a genetic variance it's, between it's people. Protective. Yeah, I, I'm not going to carry as much muscle mass as, as let's say Justin will, 
um, living the same lifestyle. I'm just not, my body doesn't naturally do that. For me to carry the muscle mass that Justin would have, for example, I would have to go beyond longevity and push more into Eat a performance. Lot of cheese. Yeah. So, yeah. so that's, <laughs> that's really what you're, that's really what you're looking at is look at your lifestyle and say, okay, am I doing things that are going beyond longevity? Uh, to push my body into kind of these extreme pursuits. And, and by the way, there's nothing wrong with that. There's also quality of life, you know, that plays a role. Like I definitely sacrifice longevity all the time uh, for performance. Um, and I'll readily admit that. Uh, and that's okay with, for me. I wouldn't recommend other people do it because I'm a better trainer for other people than myself. But that's just kind of full disclosure. So that's really the conversation such that you want to have with yourself. Such a great way to put it, Sal. And I also think that there, I mean, also have... Uh, I don't know, some some latitude or empathy for yourself. I think it's okay to have moments of time when you do that. Like, so I agree. Uh, you know, I, I think that there's times where I'm not the best, uh, you know, trainer for myself where I'm pushing the boundaries. Oh, I really want to gain right now. But then I'll come out of that. Like, I won't stay in that, that mindset. Like, I just, I'm going to chase a PR for a while, so I'm going to push calories. I'm really going to push weight. I know that's not ideal for longevity for me to be chasing that aggressively. And then I might do that for, you know, a period of time. And then I go, oh, okay, you know what? Now it's time to go through like a mobility kick. I'm going to reduce mm -hmm. my yeah. calories and I'm going to be the, the mobility guy for the next six months. I mean, mm -hmm. when you, when we're all, we're all in our forties, right? So when we get to this point in our life, like, I think that's just important that you kind of cycle through those, that mindset. And I think if, if longevity is the goal, it's good to move in and out of all those kind of mindsets. Mm -hmm. There's definitely value to building some muscle and getting really strong. Then there's also a lot of value of letting go of that for a little while and saying, Hey, I'm going to get really mobile for a while. And I'm going to see, I'm going to maybe push endurance. You know, for the, a little the, bit. the other side of that too, is the, uh, the mental growth that comes from doing that. Cause I, look, again, I don't know you personally, John, but let's just say you're very attached to this amount of muscle size and strength. And this is like, you don't want to lose it. Well, there could be some growth from moving out of like heavy strength training and moving purely into mobility and allowing yourself to lose some of that size and muscle because of the, the, the personal growth that you may go through, uh, detaching from always having to look, you know, 240 pounds and be this big guy. So, so there's a lot of different, it's, it's more complex than just being like, you know, this much muscle is good. This much muscle is bad. Um, but again, there's muscle itself by itself is correlated with longevity. It's really yeah. about how you got the muscle. That's what you need to examine and see if you're 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 healthier or if you're now pushing beyond health and more into performance. Yeah, I, mean, I totally agree, agree with all. That. I think uh, too, like in terms of risk reward, because you're so um, drawn towards like five by five and kind of like um, stacking plates and and you know lifting heavy amounts of weight. Uh, you know that's where like when we start to really talk about longevity, uh, we got to interrupt that and and, and it, 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 either with mobility or you're already doing that kind of naturally with symmetry, which I think is smart. Um, but really to consider just all the different planes of movement and, and to be able to strengthen and support your body uh, in those pursuits. So you go back, you sort of reinforce and you build strength around the joints and then you come back and you press it a bit. So it's a bit of an undulating approach where we can bring in that intensity again and we can get back to kind of what you love, but you just have to just break it up naturally and, and just keep moving in, in a direction where it's benefiting your body. Yep. Does that answer? Does that help you a little bit? Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah, I think I've I think I've had a fairly healthy relationship with it. I you know I'm, I basically just follow your programs to a T. I'm not pushing the TRT harder than it needs to be at all. Like, um, so yeah, I, I and I don't think that I would. And I mean, I know I wouldn't enjoy <laughs> the mobility stuff as much because I am kind of stuck on how I look and feel, but. Uh, I know that it would be beneficial to work on my mobility, especially my shoulder and my ankles and stuff. So were you an athlete? Um, were you an athlete in college, high school? No, I mean, I played baseball in the summers and stuff, but not really competitively at all. Okay. So just a big, I'm just, just a big corn fed dude. farm boy, kind of <laughs> <in the> central <laughs> Valley. Uh, yeah. I mean, you, where you were in the central Valley are you from, uh, Fres well, Clovis, but Fresno. Okay. I was just yeah. saying, you look kind of familiar too. Are you a police officer? You look like a cop. No, 
Just, just <laughs> haircut. Just no, he's like, like I know you. Adam, <laughs> Adam and Justin recognize you. Like, maybe you're a cop. Maybe you pulled him over. You're on a motorcycle. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I, this is my. I have called in before though, so. I, maybe oh, okay, like, okay, that's probably why then. Yeah. I was gonna say you Good look deal. familiar. Yeah. You got on it. Yeah, yeah, no, that's 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 about it, dude. Do you have yeah. maps? Per, okay. Do you have maps performance? Yeah, I, was I have maps say. performance. I, okay. I got halfway through, and then I. I moved to powerlift when I first got into you guys. So yeah. I like, I like, I like, the, I like the mobility um, sessions for you. Yeah. I, you okay. should do, you should do those on your off days. I think that'll be good. Yeah. That's a good point too, by the way, you now, it sounds like you are pretty well versed in our programs. Now you can kind yeah. of start to play with them a little yeah. bit. Right. So maybe you're running like a power lift type of protocol, but then, you know, you got two days out of the yeah. week where you're like, you know what, today I'm just going to do all mobility work. different maps program, in, you know, you, you, each you time. You talk about doing your hikes, right? So like I might go, we're, say we're running power lift and then on Saturdays you like to do these hikes. I might say, hey, before you go do your, you know, hour hike or whatever, spend 20 to 30 minutes doing a mobility session. Yep. So I, if, you know, if you were my client and this was kind of the question, I would also encourage you to kind of start to mold our programs a little bit to what you know you need with what you know you like to do and and balancing here's, them out. Here's a Adam's bit. hack for that, that that he really does a good job with is uh, fall in love with the new goal, and that way you're you're okay with you know like okay that's it I'm going to become like excellent at mobility, and it makes it a lot easier to move away from the strength and size aspect because now you're focused so hard on a different goal. It's a nice hack for those of us that get attached to the the muscle and strength. Okay, yeah, that sounds good. You got it. Thanks for calling in, John. Right. See you, John. All right, thanks, guys. Take yep. care. Just just to hammer this home, so there was a st a, a, a study that I brought up a, a while ago on pro bodybuilders. Okay, now pro bodybuilders are the extreme, not the healthiest athletes, no. to put it lightly. These are extreme athletes. Everything they do is extreme. Their training is extreme. Their dieting is extreme. The drugs that they use to look they, the way they do yeah. is extreme. So they don't do anything for health. It's all for extreme pursuits of muscle growth. Here's the funny, this is how protective muscle is. Their lifespans on average match those of the average American. So you think, okay, well, the average American is not very healthy. Sure, but they're not doing the crazy shit that bodybuilders are doing. But here's where it's crazy. Bodybuilders have a significant lower rate of cancer. Mm -hmm. Even though they live that, and they take growth hormone like you wouldn't even believe and testosterone and steroids. Yeah, and they just, and all kinds of stuff. oh, terrible stuff. And yet they get cancer at lower rates because muscle is, and they have diabetes at far lower rates because that's how protective muscle is. And, I, and I'm using one of the unhealthiest groups of athletes mm -hmm. just so that people understand how protective muscle is. It's really about what you do to get the muscle. That's what can make you I, unhealthy. You know, yeah. I actually want Doug to write that down for you to do that as an opener to one of our quads because I don't think I've ever heard you actually say it like that. And I think that's really really good advice because how often do we get asked like the question like that where i i'm this percent body fat i'm this old is this healthy or this yeah. not? and there's such a wide spectrum of how much muscle you should or shouldn't have for health and longevity yeah. for every person it's individualized and so probably the best advice you've ever get i've ever heard you give like in, in regards to that was just now was that it's how you got there that matters more than that. If you had to, if you, just like if you were shredded and you had to like starve yourself to do that or do hours and hours about it, it's probably not really healthy. Right. Versus there. like this yeah. is where you Yeah, sit. if you're 6% body fat, which I would normally say for the average person, that's not a healthy place to be. But if you do that naturally without really trying just by making good just food choices healthy, yeah. and training five days a week, well, you're a Your person. Your just humming. Yeah, you're yeah. a person who that that does make that's sense. Right. And and that's why there's we can't just say, oh, that percentage is unhealthy. I mean, I used, I used Justin right. as an example because I would say him and I are on two sides of this particular spectrum. For mm -hmm. me to, to carry the muscle mass that he can carry in a healthy way, I would have to push myself beyond health. Yes. And I think for leanness, it would be the same yeah, for you, right, same, Justin? Yeah. For you to walk around at 7%. I'd be pushing it hard. It would yeah. be things that Real weren't hard. healthy. Yeah. So, I mean, that's, that's just an example of where that spectrum was. Yeah. Okay. Next caller is Garrett from California. Truck Garrett, me. welcome back. <laughs> hey, thanks for having me back. Um, yeah, I, I, I called in a year and a half ago or so. I don't know if you, you probably, it, you know, you get a lot of calls, so I'm not sure you remember my question, but uh, my original question was around uh, training for two seasonal athletic events, uh, an ultra marathon in July and teaching skiing in December and January. Oh yeah, I remember and, that. And uh, y'all ended Y'all ended up giving me uh, MAPS performance and you gave me some advice on how to kind of structure that training. And I just wanted to 
kind of one of the reasons I wanted to uh, d- uh, call in was to give a progress report and just say that like it, it worked out great. Um, I, I I've ran Maps Performance a bunch of times in a row. Um, you know, I managed to stay healthy through uh, you know the ultra, and then this year through all of my uh, uh, marathon and ultra marathon training. And then for you know, as you're probably aware, we had a pretty epic ski season last mm-hmm. year, and um, uh, I, you know, hit the ground running with that and felt really good and was able to ski strong all season. So nice. yeah, I wanted to say really appreciated that, uh, all of that. Um, awesome. Right on. And yeah, um, for my, my follow-up question, um, I, I've noticed that, uh, there's several places kind of in a sort of a cluster, uh, where I, I feel like I'm weak. Um, and so the, the pl- three places are, um, when I, when I'm, skating during skiing uh my side butt which i think is like the gluteus medius Mm -hmm, um mm -hmm. it just gets really exhausted like really quickly like takes a while and yeah after a while i sort of build up that you know strength and endurance um when i'm running sprints those will just destroy my hamstrings and then uh in maps performance when i'm doing like a lot of the kind of more the high volume lunges my hips get really sore um and that that just seems to be consistent. That doesn't seem to get any, any better. Mm -hmm. And, uh, so minor update from my question. Um, I'm wrapping up, uh, uh, ultra marathon training here at the end of October, and I'm going to be switching gears back into more weightlifting. And so I wanted to, uh, kind of be, you know, earlier on in the season, I was doing maps performance and just like switching out all of the bilateral training for like unilateral, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, single leg RDLs and uh, a lot more lunges and, you know, that kind of thing to, to try and train that sort of strength. But I just wanted to, my question was, is, you know, is that the right approach or Mm -hmm. is there a better program or, you know, what's a, what's sort of the best. I was going to say symmetry, but you're kind of doing that so uh that's a great mod the what you've decided to do because i was gonna before you even got to that point tell you oh map symmetry would do you really well so that is the program that is already mapped out that way but but what you're doing is actually uh, a really smart choice too do you do any um mobility priming before you start your workouts are you doing anything like that like I yeah, think- I do a lot of like the 90 90s okay, and combat yeah. stretch. Um, those are the, the, the ones that really seem to help me. And yep. then I have some, um, some mobility stuff that from a, a, a climbing, um, coach that there- I, a rock climbing coach that there- I do. Also. There, I think I got, mm-hmm. I think I got something that's going to make this, uh, a lot better. Do you have access to a sled? Hmm. <laughs> Uh, you know, so we don't have a sled, but we have a, um, you know, the, the tires that, uh, have like the handles Mm -hmm. and, um, and I, I think they're meant that you could drag them. That's fine. Um, Yeah. That works. So I want you to do all kinds of lateral dragging Mm -hmm. with the tire lateral, meaning you're, you're like, do you know, do you know what a karaoke is? Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Literally you're going to drag a tire and you're going to go in one direction, and then you're going to drag a tire and go the other direction. Yeah. You're going to do karaokes. You're going to bring the feet together, yeah. separate them apart. You're going to do a reverse karaoke. You step I, over. You kind of step out. You step over. I want you, you to do literally direction. like substitute some of your leg workouts for just a bunch okay. of, and then also do front, you know, forward, you know, driving and back, and you know, and 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 back uh, dragging. But I want you to start with lateral move. Do like three to six sets of just lateral dragging and then you can do where you push and you pull Didn't, and that that'll make a significant improvement because what you're what you're noticing with the, and this is connected to the hamstring too your lateral stability is is lacking a little bit that's why you're feeling that okay. that fatigue in the side you know in the, in the gluteus medius and i yeah. think the hamstring is probably i think your hip is trying to stabilize with some of the other muscles because your lateral stability is lacking mm-hmm. and okay. most workout programs just there's a lot of focus on moving forward and back and just not a lot laterally. So, and for someone like, which is okay. Like mass performance is very well balanced. Yeah. For an average person, not a skier. Right. You're, you're, you're really putting a lot of lateral demands on your body because of what the skiing in particular. So I would, I would like, uh, I mean, I may even replace some of the squats for like a lateral lunge, caustic squats, you know, and just kind of go through it and, and sub out. Uh, you know, with, with that, but I think uh, I think symmetry is on the right track with that, and to 
uh, you know, to go through that. So you do kind of gain that stability as you're a bit more in like in an unstable situation, uh, especially when you're doing like an RDL, make sure like your, your foot and your hips don't turn at all. And that's really the biggest focus for you is to be able okay. to maintain that anti-rotational ability. Uh, so that's going to provide that lateral stability support as well. I think there's really good, uh, mind pump TV videos of you doing the lateral sled, yeah. sled yes. drags. So if looking but at that's perfect. Yeah. That's such an easy thing to apply right away. And it's going to, and you can lot. add a lot of volume with yeah. that because it's, it's, it's harder to overtrain with a sled than it is with traditional, um, strength training because you're not getting the negative, uh, you know, yeah. portion of the rep. So literally what I would do is every day you work out, I would do like three sets of some kind of lateral dragging mm -hmm. and then get into okay. a workout. And if it, if it becomes too much, you can reduce volume on the other leg exercises. Don't take out the lateral dragging. And you'll notice a significant improvement in exactly what you talked about. I love, I love too, uh, playing with how you do it, meaning uh, sometimes you go light and are, are very technical and kind of speed focused on it. And then other days do kind of grinding and heavy too. Yeah. So you get benefits from, you know, playing with how you do it laterally also. I don't remember, uh, I think you were more uh, grinding and slow when you did the, yeah. on the video, right? Yeah. yeah but, you can, the but you could really lighten it up and be kind of more speed focused or like Sal was talking about the feet together exploding. I love, I love to take a band around my knees yeah. and explode, explode, explode yeah. out and then come back the yeah, other direction. Yeah, tube walking, tube walking would yeah. be good too, but just right. some oh, yeah. kind of lateral. Yeah, I've did, I do some, a little bit of lateral band walks, but um I'll, I'll try it. Not enough. Yeah. I, I, it's just some kind of lateral well, dragging I would do on a, a okay. almost if every you time you work out. If you can take one of those big, long um, uh, rubber bands, and a lot of times I'll do two of them together. So I'll wrap one around uh, the, the squat post and then I'll, I'll extend it out, you know, put it up over my hips and then I'll, and I'll walk it out and get that resistance as far out as I can go on a lateral walk. And then I'm coming back in too. So now I'm having that resistance pulling me, uh, as I'm sort of decelerating my way back. Uh, so that okay. too is, is going to be really helpful because of too, if your if your hamstring is one of those things you're finding out is like fatiguing a lot too, we're going to want to strengthen that decelerating process as well. Yeah. Okay, cool. That that makes a lot of sense because I think with the um the sprints, I think it's the the it's the really hard short sprints with like the you know, the quick deceleration. I think that's yeah. the Yeah. But the, I mean yeah, look, the, the hamstring is a very big uh hip stabilizing uh and moving muscle. And if you're lacking stability somewhere, then what happens is your body transfers that stability to other muscles probably what's happening with your hamstrings yeah the, 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 okay the, the recommendation on the heavy sled is going to make all the world yep, a difference yep. you're going to it'll okay tra it'll translate really well i mean with you, you with it, within a few weeks you'll notice a difference and, and it's so important you know just to reiterate what the guys are saying it's so important that it's not a big deal a guy like you is not a big deal if you're if you're doing backloaded squats i would get rid of that if it's if it's getting in the way of the sled drive. yeah don't take mm -hmm. away the sled let drive. that be the cornerstone is the okay. is literally the, mm -hmm. the getting good get good and strong at that you yep. get good and strong at that and that's going to really carry carry over into the things that you do with the um so with just like practically the um the tire that they have at our gym it's like the you know it's the kind that has it sort of has a wrapper around it sure and then it has like the handles yeah um and do you just um do you just like use like a, a strap or something sure. to like attach that it doesn't if matter. They have that yeah sure or you could just hold on to it like this across so like one hand is over here across and the other one's fully extended and then we're just dragging you it. you can hold on to it okay. you can find a way to attach it around your waist you know you can involve more of your core less of your core but really what's important is that you're doing some kind of lateral dragging okay. In your workout, and, cool. And, and hey, at one point, like because of what you do uh, so often, this might even be a worth investment for yourself personally to have yeah. at home too. So you can get relatively inexpensive, like like basic sleds too yeah. that aren't crazy over the top. I'm a big yeah. fan of the Torx sled. Look into them. Yeah, for sure. they're awesome. Okay. They're expensive, but those are those yeah, are the best. There's, yeah, there's a few. Options, but you can but find like you can get some pretty basic shit that will do its job, and it ain't, it's probably worth having since this is something that would totally. carry over into what you do so often. Yeah, right on. Awesome. Yeah. Cool. And so, and you think um, uh, stick with the performance or symmetry or I, I, either one would be Both. fine. Yeah. Either one's yeah. fine. Okay. In Alternate. fact, really re rotate between those yeah. two programs for what you do. Okay. Yep. yep. Yeah. I think it'd be, I think it'd be worth trying out symmetry just because I've, I've run performance now. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Oh, yeah. 10 times okay. Then go symmetry. Like yeah, you'll yep. get, you get a lot of benefits cool. from that. Yep. All right. All right. Cool. Thank you. All right, yeah. man. Thanks, buddy. All right. Thanks. Have a good one. You too. 
I, I, I think the sled yeah, uh, great call. has yeah. got to be. Yeah, yeah, great call. It should be the cornerstone. The, should oh, be yeah. his cornerstone I mean, for what he does. Being being like a downhill ski guy like that. Like I'm convinced any athlete. I mean, it, yes, it's it, especially to like uh, backwards as well. Just dragging it like just for the the overall knee longevity and health and like just um, getting that kind of volume and strength without a lot of the damage. It's just beautiful. It's one of the safest, most functional most effective, least damaging. I, I don't know any other tool that would fit in the same category. Just like that's how valuable it is. Look, if you like Mind Pump, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out some of our free fitness guides. They cost nothing and they can help you with so many different fitness goals. You can also find all of us on social media. Justin is on Instagram at Mind Pump Justin. I'm on Instagram at Mind Pump DeStefano and Adam is on Instagram at Mind Pump Adam. 